Now, we go live to the field with a call for tonight's game with the voice of the Perry Maroons, Brock Campbell and color analyst Mike Shaw. And welcome, everybody, to Woods County in Alva, Oklahoma, on the campus of Northwestern Oklahoma State University. The Rangers uh, field is the uh, choice field that the Alva Goldbugs will uh, they share. So we are at the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers, and I uh, unfortunately heard that they're not having a very good year either. They're 1-7. Oh, wow. So, yeah. But they just had a coaching change, and uh, you know how that is. He just resigned two weeks ago, so right in the middle of the year. Oh, so, uh, But anyways, uh, enough of that. Uh, but we're at the Rangers Stadium. They're gonna they're building a brand-new uh, state-of-the-art uh, uh, press box just to uh, across the way on the west side. So we'll be over there in about two years. We're on the east side. They're also going to have uh, field turf. Uh, uh, it's going to be really nice like OSU has in a couple of years, so it's going to be a really nice facility. But uh, Mike Shaw, Brock Campbell with you tonight, and uh, Perry comes in with a 5-4 and four record, kind of limping into this game. Um, they started strong in the year uh, to start the year. Then we went through – let's just be honest, Mike, we went through a gauntlet of a schedule yeah, this year. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we did get some, some opponents that – uh, we're more to our level this year as opposed to the Anadarkos and the Cushings from last year. Right. But still, really good competition and, and a gauntlet of a year for Perry. That schedule flips next year, so we'll go to those teams' uh, homes next year and we'll have the teams that we beat at home next year. So we might flip the schedule because Perry has a chance to go undefeated on the road tonight with the win with the, uh, at, here at Alva. They would go 5-0 and on the road. They're 1-4 and at home, so... Uh, we've got a perfect uh, night for football. Unfortunately, we don't have any capability to lift the, the windows and, and be out in the crowd because we're in a uh, booth that's uh, surrounded by walls and, and yes. glass. So, uh, sar so sarcophagus in here. <laughs> so, uh, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, we're, we're here. At I, I know it's your first trip probably to Alva, but it's my, I don't know how many trips, but, my God, that trip gets longer and longer yeah. every time I come up here because it's just – road it is, that's yeah. all it is it's two lane road once you get to medford or uh, excuse me past blackwell and then you get into medford and then if you get behind a truck or a farm right. truck you, you're just you know well i was two way all the way i just went ahead and gone up went up uh, 81 i figured so you were i was go i was two road. way all the way <laughs> and i actually have connection to alva my dad's american leveling and uh they did the the field house it might not have been this one but they did one back in 1981 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. worked on it and that's the last time my dad's ever been here too so that's a little connection to Alva I have. I may have never been here before. but Well, I can't believe we're already at week 10, Mike. This this season has flown, and, and, and basketball and wrestling are just done, you know, down the road, but we still have football. Perry has qualified for the playoffs. They will finish third regardless of win or loss tonight. They will be playing at Christian Heritage Academy in Dell City next week. I'll give you all the details for that um, in, later on the pregame show. Uh, they are going to be 5-4, and 3-2 and two coming in tonight. Alva is 0-9, 0-5. And, and uh, last week, uh, you know, just comparative opponents. This is uh, Perry is a heavy favorite tonight, as as you would believe. But to compare to opponents, Pawnee was here last week. They beat Alva fifty six to eight, and yeah. Perry beat Al uh, Pawnee forty three to ten. So forty ten, yeah. If we don't come out on fire and put away this team early, then we've got some issues going yeah. into next week. And talk about a perfect team to limp in against. To be honest with you, yeah. to get your confidence back, an Alva team that. Has six seniors, I think, at the most. Mm -hmm. Starts 15 sophomores and freshmen, you know, combined on both sides. I mean, and we just found out they changed that. They had more seniors and juniors yeah, starting in the beginning of the year. We had we talked to yeah, Mr. A, Ron a, Vasquez, right? He's an officer that uh, really pranked me just a little while ago. Yeah. It was I thought I was going to jail for a bottle of water, uh, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> the athletic director told me to go get a bottle of water because they were setting up the concession. He said if anybody would ask, you yeah. know, just tell him that, you know, I, I told you you could have a bottle of water. And nobody saw me. But, you know, being the honest person I am, I went over and said, hey, I'm just taking a bottle of water. Steve told me I could take one. And then all of a sudden Ron comes out of the blue and says, come back here. <laughs> and I'm like, what I do? And he goes, uh, I'm 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 the I'm the radio guy. He goes, I don't care who you are, <laughs> and he and he had his guys going too at the concession uh, stand, and then then he you know he he was yeah. he gave me a hug and told me he's he wasn't serious, but then he still didn't think I thought he wasn't serious, and he came up here and he we had a nice chat. He gave us a little insider information of what the team's going through. Might have a new coach next year. What yeah, I'm, what I'm hearing. That. He was talking a couple of options. Um, you know, coach, coach Bruce Dollar is here. This is his third year, uh, but he they're they're saying a lot of people here at Alva are, are maybe ready to get to a change in, in play. 
That's so, kind of quick on the trigger for two yeah. teams that went to the playoffs well, the last two years. You know, we'll talk about them here in a minute, and you'll understand why they are where they are because of what they lost last year. Yeah. Um, uh, they lost a ton of people last year, but we'll go into that in the pregame. But we're happy you're here on the radio. We're happy you're here with us on the broadcast, whether you're listening to us on the radio, on the internet, or on your phone, or you're in the stands listening to us on your phone as well. It's going to be a perfect night. It's going to be in the high 50s. Uh, it's not going to be very cold, but I, we know it's football weather because guess what? There's a chance of snow, rain, and ice next Sunday. A 50% chance wow. statewide. Well, so. what if it snowed on Friday? That'd be kind of <laughs> cool. And if you're going to the Texas game, I don't know if you're going to the Texas game, OSU, Texas, no. it's going to be 30 degrees at kickoff. Well, so um, that might yeah. be the under for the score, <laughs> so, <laughs> too. <laughs> anyways, that might be an omen of, of you know, yeah. our season. I know, it's so, been bad. But we'll get into we'll, we'll talk about that later. But we're well, happy to have you on the broadcast. We're going to go ahead and take our first time out. Uh, you're, you're listening to Perry Moon Football and Triple Play Sports. Yeah. And welcome back to Alba, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw on the campus of Northwestern Oklahoma State. The Rangers are the... I wonder why they're called the Rangers. I was I, thinking that yesterday. I, I, I have no idea. I but, uh, come up with I know a lot of Perry kids come to Alva. Uh, we've had some football players come to Alva, and we've had uh, up our the past coach before, Coach Bennett, Coach Hickson, is an alumni from Oh, that's from right, here. yeah. So there's a lot of uh, Perry lineage that comes through here. Boy, that was a, that was a good word. Perry lineage, I, I, yeah. That's my only one for tonight, sorry. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and look at the uh, Alva Goldbugs, the tonight's opponent for the Perry Maroons, and... Just a little side note. I've always wondered what a gold bug was, and I did a little research. Is it real? It is not a real. Oh, okay. It's not a real. Uh, it's made up. It's like Jayhawk, then. Okay, this is from Mark's collection of high school mascots. Uh, so if you Google it, you can go to Mark's distinctive collection of high school max- mascots. Like Mark's, M-A-R-X. M-A-R-C. M-A-R-C. So this is what he says uh, according to what he got from... Alva and what a gold bug is. So I'm going to give you a little history lesson before we go into the opponent. <laughs> the name was inspired by the school's principal in the 1920s. He was a great admirer of Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. And especially like Poe's The Gold Bug. He conceived wow. the idea of awarding paper gold bugs to outstanding and talented students. So the name was soon applied to Alva's teams. So it's huh. not a gold, it's not a bug. Yeah. It's made up. It's a made-up award. Wow. So there That's you go. That's cool, yeah. There's some historical facts of what an Alva gold bug is. There you go. I kind of always a, thought it was real, too, maybe. It's a made-up mascot. Because huh. I got to thinking, is that like a bug that's in, in, indigenous to this area? Yeah. But and they found gold here a long time ago, maybe. I, and, uh, and and that's another. <laughs> uh, it's it's somebody that admires gold too, is what a gold bug is too, as well. Oh, okay. So, so one of those people, girl, there's a lot of gold bugs in Beverly Hills. And then. and there's no gold. Okay. There's no gold in Northwest <laughs> Oklahoma. There's there's sand. <laughs> there's sand. Yeah. There's oil. Yeah. Um, but there's no gold. So okay. there's your historical. Per- that's your that's your lesson tonight. So. Historical facts. There you That's go. Historical, like to do. historical facts from Brock Campbell. So, there you go. I always wanted to know. There you go. There's there's the uh, what it what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and look at tonight's opponent, the Alva Goldbugs, coming in with a record of 0-9, uh, 0-5 in the district. They will not make the playoffs, obviously. 2013 record was seven and four. Their head coach is Bruce Dollar. It's he's in his third year. Um, we didn't get much from Coach Dollar because I, I think he's just trying to focus on getting one win and. It, let me tell you, they're going to try their dangest to get a win tonight. Perry has got to be on the ball mm-hmm. and yeah. cannot play the competition Absolutely. like they did at Newkirk. No, it's kind of like what uh, Lou Holtz said. I always hated playing Navy because they'd beat Navy so many times. Right. There's that one time they right. could sneak up on you. So. Right, exactly. Offensively, we're going to see a different form from Alva. Last year they yeah, were more they of were a spread open, offense because yeah. they had all those uh, – those, uh, uh, nice skilled players, and they had a really good quarterback last year as well. Yes. But this year they're kind of changing it a lot. They're, it's a two-back offset eye. That means they're going to be under center a lot. Uh, they're going to have a lot of pitches, dives, and traps. Did you? What else did you see on film, Mike? That's that's it. I mean, it almost looks like they wanted to run the inverted veer, except the quarterback's not ha- snapping and running towards the sideline. Right. They play that CD gap right. and hand off. But the way it looked like, it was like, are they going to run a veer? No, it's, it's just an offset eye. They'll run a lot of fullback trap and dives. Right. And, They'll run pitches. They'll run a little misdirection, and they'll throw every blue moon. I mean, they yeah. they threw maybe seven times last week. Well, the first play of the game last no. week, they threw in a, a trick play. It was right. a it was kind of a screen to the wide receiver on the right side, and nobody was there. So they're gonna they'll try yeah. to fool you. They'll have to. But try, let's be yeah. honest, Schlar, the quarterback has he doesn't have an arm. He doesn't no. have accuracy. Um, 
even when he blocks, he really doesn't go block anybody. He right, just kind of stands yeah. in somebody's way. That's so, something that I thought – I don't mean to cut you off. That's something I thought was weird. He'll pitch it, and then he'll run out in front and block. Right. But, you know, he's he's only – well, he, he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore. Yeah. So, I mean, those are things that need to be taught better, Yeah. in, in my opinion. That, that can be taught. But, you know, he really doesn't add anything to the offense, to, to tell you the truth. I hate to, to bring the kid down, but – right. He's not a tight hooper, not even close. No. I mean, and and some of those goal bugs that were here last year are playing for Northwest and Oklahoma State. I think I saw Hooper out um, here throwing. There's Hooper, a guy throwing about 50 yards. Yeah, Hooper may be playing field, for, so. for NWSU. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he's well, not. Well, so. that's good for the program. Keeps yeah. kids around. They can help the, the high school kids that are still here. Now, defensively, <laughs> we didn't really uh, – did you see how weird was that? Well, you, you said that they run a four four and a five three, but coach on the interview when yeah. you're going to hear in a minute said they run a three four. Okay. So well, I saw. Let's let's oh, kind of you know tricky. kind of explain what you know, as a defensive guy you're more of a defensive guy than I am. Yeah. Explain what we're going to see defensively with the Gold Bucks. Well, what from what I saw on film, uh, they didn't. They had four down linemen, and they would have Costello down on the other end on uh, opposite the tight end. Standing up, so it was kind of like an inverted four-four, inverted five-three, which is weird, like an old eagle formation. Of course, that was a five-two. And the spacing. The spacing was really strange. They'd have a nose guard and the one zero and one, obviously, which means he's on the center, either head up or off the shoulder pads. Then their D tackle was all the way out to a five. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the tight end side, on the other side, he was at a three or a five. He'd match up on the other side, but mostly a three. The other DN, and then the D tackle would be at a five, and that they, they put the DN on the t- on the tight end at a seven, which is off the outside shoulder of the tight end, and sometimes a wide nine, which is something the Eagles will do, used to do with uh, Babin, but it's it it doesn't work because Pawnee, and they, they stack those Ronnie three linebackers. Ronnie Nicola and Jared Mitchell yeah. had a heyday last right week, right in that gap, and, right in the zone read. Yeah, and they'll stack the linebackers right in that gap. Well, but and, it, it doesn't and, work. And, I don't. Well, I don't get it. The gaps in between the tackles and also the corners. The gaps in between the tackles. Yeah. Brian Nicolette was running wild. The corners. Jared Mitchell. He ran that same play on on us. Yeah. And he ran wild in that. So the cor- there's going to be running room tonight yeah. for Brian Hatfield, Hatfield Taylor, and Taylor. Yeah. Heck, I think Rhodes could get in and score today. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a coach. I don't coach football. But this this system, maybe it's the best they come up with. I don't get it. It doesn't. It doesn't look like it works. And I just don't – the scheme of it – and I'm not telling Coach he's wrong with 3-4. I didn't see a 3-4. I hope four. you're not telling Coach he's wrong because no, they're I'm right talking, next door. I'm talking about their coach. <laughs> they're right next door. Oh, well, <laughs> Coach, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't get it. it it's it, it's confusing. Well, you know, they, they've got a lot of youth. It's just – it's all there is to it. When you look at their strengths, I really, I really didn't see any on film. I, I really didn't. They're on the job learning right now. Yeah, They really so are with kids. all the young kids. Uh, weaknesses, like I said, they're very young and inexperienced. Um, not very, very athletic at all. I mean, uh, let's just be honest with it. You know, that, it, that's yeah. why they're going nine for a reason. Uh, players to watch this season, I, I picked number twelve, Travis Costello, because he's the big, tall, lanky. I'm not going to uh, miss him at all tonight because he, he yeah. you can't miss him. He's a big, tall, lanky running back that runs uh, those sweeps and those. But he's not quick. I'm surprised he's, he's not the quarterback. He's, he's not quick at all. Yeah. But he will pass. They will use him in right. the backfield to to do a pass as well to down to the receivers. But he's not quick. He's not shifty. Um, he's, he's lanky. He's just there. <laughs> yeah. But if he can, if he finds a gap, he can go a little bit. He can go a little bit. So, yeah. He's not going to outrun anybody. No, though, that's he's for not. Sure. Um, a little a little summary about their season. They're a very young, inexperienced team, like we alluded to. They do not tackle well, and they do not block well. Uh, not very athletic, and much different offensive scheme than last year. From this from to this year, they lost all their skill players. Let me tell you what they've lost. They lost their quarterback, their six five wide receiver, their big tight end, their running back, and probably most uh, their offensive and most of the line. yeah most of the offensive. That's that's why they are right now. And once you know. Also, like we've said, Brownie Nicollet and Jared Mitchell, Apani, ran all over the Bugs last week in a 56-8 victory, and it wasn't even that close. I mean, they could have hit 70 on them yeah. if they wanted to. Um, I so, saw five, at least five touchdown runs of 40 to 50 plus yards. Yeah, yeah. So and just zone reads and just yeah, simple, simple plays, stuff. nothing, nothing flashy. I know. And so just a that, complete 180. Yeah. For so Alvin. that's a look at the Alva Gold Bucks tonight. Tonight's opponent for uh, Perry as they travel here to Woods County to take on the uh, Gold Bucks here. 0 9, 0 5. We're going to go ahead and take our next time out. We'll come back. We'll have the coaches' pregame interview. After this, you're listening to Perry Moon Football and Triple Play Sports. A lot of energy to run, but we care about where and how it's produced. 
At Devon Energy, we're not just providing energy, but responsible ways to supply it. That's why we're proud supporters of the areas where we live and work. Because just as important as what the world needs today is what it needs for tomorrow. Devon Energy. Commitment runs deep. Hey, football fans. The crunch, crack, and bang of bones go along with gridiron football. But where do you go when your bones take a hit? Turn to Stillwater's own Ortho, Oklahoma. As bone and joint specialists, our board-certified orthopedic physicians join physical therapists and nurses to treat your injuries with hometown friendliness and expert care. At Ortho, Oklahoma, we are keeping you together. Learn more at orthook.com or call 405-707-0900. At Stillwater Medical Center, we're asking for more. From our nurses. And our staff. We're devoting ourselves to providing unhurried and compassionate care. Our mission is simple, to perfect the patient experience. It's everything you expect from a major medical center. With all the things that you love about a hometown hospital. Learn more about our mission at stillwatermedical.com. Just like the Perry Maroons football team practices hard and plays even harder, Vance Chevrolet GMC Buick of Perry works 24-7 to provide customers with the very best selection and service. Right now, we're offering a special oil change filter and tire rotation for $29.95 and only $69.95 for a diesel oil and filter change. Yes, Vance Chevrolet Buick GMC of Perry, family owned and operated for 19 years, where it's comfortable to buy a car. First of all, a sloppy game by both teams. You had seven turnovers, Perry committed. Chisholm had three or four. You know, it was just kind of sloppy in that first quarter. Uh, but I thought we came out more fired up and focused. And, uh, and I thought it seemed like they got, when they got that 51-yard reverse play, that that kind of took the air out of our cells. Am I right? And assess that game as a whole. Well, I mean, you know, obviously we've had our, we've had, we had our chances. Um, you know, we just got to find a way to put points on the board. I mean, that's, that's what we're struggling. Um, you know, we got to have some kids step up, and obviously, when you got a sophomore quarterback, sometimes he's on, sometimes he's off, and uh, and you're, we're still trying to find a running game. Um, obviously, you know, you miss Mendenhall. I mean, because Kobe, he can hit it. He hits the hole hard and fast, and he's quick, and he can get to the outside and break at any time. And, and I mean, and then we got Hatfield and and Mason. They're not doing a bad job, but but they they're not as quick getting to the hole as Kobe was, and, and that's what we're kind of struggling with right now. And and hopefully, you know, we can just keep getting better and, and keep getting uh, those those guys ready for uh, tonight and then obviously next week in the playoffs. Well, as you said, you're obviously in the playoffs playing Christian Heritage next week um, up in Dell City. But <clears throat> having said that, what do you want to accomplish tonight as, as a heavy favorite over the Gold Bucks going into the playoffs? I, I just want to I just want to accomplish our, I want our kids to play with effort, I want us to execute like we're coached to execute. And, and man, I want to have fun. Um, you know, the last couple of weeks have been not fun. <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, you know, Hennessy wasn't fun. Um, New Kirk, we won. Just say it wasn't fun. Uh, last week wasn't fun either. But, you know, I just want to have fun. I want I want the kids to go out and have a good time. And I want the kids to, uh, <laughs> I want the kids to, to go out and execute and, 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 and play like they're coached to play. And, and I think everything else will be okay. The voices you hear in the background, we're in the uh, Northwest Oklahoma State Rangers training room and their locker rooms right over there. So that's what you're hearing. So we're not having a crowd behind us yelling at us. But um, let's talk about update on the injuries. Uh, Brian had his finger. Uh, he, he dislocated that last week. Uh, Luke went out with it looked like he was favoring his, uh, was it his right foot uh, or left foot? I can't remember. Um, Austin Reyes, is he back? And then talk about the possibility of getting Mr. Mendenhall back next week. Right. Um, yeah, Luke's Luke's ankle's still a little swollen. Um, I think he pretty much third degree sprained it, which that's a little bit tougher. Um, but he's been icing and things like that. Um, you know, he's suiting up tonight, but he he most likely won't play unless it's an emergency. Um, Reyes is back tonight. Um, obviously, he's going to play more defense. You know, he's going we're going to limit him and G 
a lot more on offense just to kind of give them some breathers and hopefully some other guys we can see if they can step up or not. Um, yeah, Kobe, I mean, hopefully, you know, he, he's been doing what the doctor's been telling him to do. He's been, he's been doing some shock treatment on it, and he's been icing it, and he's been taking care of it. He's got a new brace, and, and hopefully we can uh, definitely have him back for next week. That'll be definitely a surprise for Christian Heritage, and it, it'll definitely be a boost for our offense. Yeah, I don't expect anybody from Christian Heritage to be listening to our pregame. That's why I brought that up, so I'm not going to tell anybody else either. So uh, let's talk about Alva. Obviously, they've struggled a lot this year. Um, you're a heavy favorite, but you, you know, you can bet your bottom dollar that Coach Dollar is going to do everything he can to get a win tonight, and so are those seniors here in senior night. Uh, what we're, what are we going to see with Alva offensively and defensively tonight? You know, the, I mean, they're a young team. Um, obviously, they were senior heavy last year, and they lost. A, I mean, they lost a couple key guys last year on that football team. Um, I think some of them are actually playing here. All skill players. Yeah. Right. Every skill player they had. Um, you know, it, it's weird. They're changing up their offense a little bit. It's like a broken bone or, uh, you know, I don't really know what you call kind it. Kind of an offset eye. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, eye. it's it's kind of different. Um, I'm kind of surprised he's running it, but obviously he wants things to be tight. That's why he's running it. Obviously he's got young guys. Uh, Defense-wise, they're going to be in a 3-4 look most, most of the night. I mean, like they've done last year. I mean, that's nothing new for uh, them. But, yeah, offensive-wise, I think he's just doing that to hopefully keep those young guys and hopefully just kind of keep their heads up, you know, not, you know, let teams score that much. But they're young. I mean, they'll be good in a couple years. I'm going to throw one more question at you. I didn't send this to you, but pretty easy to, to probably respond to. Dawson Padilla, he's, he's only 15 years old. He's a sophomore quarterback. He's had a heck of a season, almost 1,500 yards passing, but has – has really struggled these last couple of weeks. What have you done to to get him more prepared and maybe show him some love and say, hey, you know, we're going to work through these things and you're going to be better for it? What have you said to him over the last couple of weeks? Well, you know, uh, all these kids are like my boys, and and yeah, you go through up and down. I mean, that's I, I do too as a coach. I mean, even when I'm at home, I go up and down. Um, you know, it, it's just one of those things where you just got to keep loving on him and hug him and. And tell him you love him, tell him you're proud of him, tell him, you know, he can do it. And just kind of be positive with him. Um, you know, the last thing kids need when they're down is being negative. And a guy yelling or doing whatever to him that some guys think that's motivation. To me, that's not motivation. Um, when a guy's, when one of your kid's down, man, you just want to love on him, keep being positive and, and try to keep working on him, doing some drills and stuff and practice so he can get better. And, and, and he's fine. I mean, you know. The thing is, I mean, it's it's one of those things where he's on, and maybe the wide receiver drops the ball, and and obviously if you if you if you've been struggling a little bit and that happens, then you're like, oh, what do I got to, you know, you it, need it, right? Yeah, you need you need we need to catch the football, and and a lot of times it's it's not his fault always, but you know we got to work through that and just keep getting better. Well, let's talk about the keys to tonight's uh, ball game to get the sixth victory uh, over the Alva Goldbugs. What, what, is, what do we have to do offensively and defensively to get out of here with a win? You know, offensively, man, we just got to hang on the freaking football. Um, we got to be ball security, ball security. And we just got to, you know, execute. We got we got to have some guys step up and make plays. Um, um, our old line's got to get better. I mean, they got to they got to they got to want to be better. Um, Defensive-wise, man, we're doing okay. We just got to keep flying the football. And, and you know, that's that's one thing we always preach about, man. Defense is first. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can get those guys flying around tonight, which they will. I mean, they, they pretty much have every game. It's just we just got to score some points on offensive-wise. Well, now let's move to our, our fun segment. Sirius is over. Uh, our fun segment, the uh, coaches and, and my picks. And I'm waving the red the white flag for the year because – I, I'm I'm down. I'm I'm not going to come back. Last week, Oklahoma State, they scored one. They scored like butter, like hot butter. Went down the field, and then they're like, "Oh, we got our seven points. We're done." 48-14, they lost. 59-14, uh, Oklahoma. I picked Iowa State. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought the 11 o'clock game might uh, get them. Tulsa, God bless Tulsa. Memphis, 40 to 20, um, and your your Huskers playing good. 35-14. This week, only two games. Baylor at Oklahoma, SMU at Tulsa. I'm going to go ahead and let you pick first, and I'm going to go off of you. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. Baylor and Oklahoma, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Um, it's 11 o'clock, too. Wow. And you never know, man. Their offense was clicking at Iowa State, but yeah, I, they're Different scary. Bear. Different bear, no pun intended. Right. Um, I'm going to pick OU, though. 
I'm going to go Boomer Sooner. I'm, I'm going to make some fans happy. I'll go Boomer Sooner. SMU and Tulsa, I mean, flip a quarter. I mean, those are two, probably two of the worst teams there is. But it's at Tulsa. I'm going to go with Tulsa. Maybe they can pull it out. I'm actually going to echo you. I'm going to take OU and Tulsa. I, I just uh, – I don't think Baylor can take it in Norman, but we'll, we'll see. But uh, you're in the lead, 26-2, and two, and I'm 22-6. and six. That's why I'm waving the white flag, my white paper right here. I'm waving it. But anyways, uh, thanks for talking to us. Uh, congratulations on the playoff berth, uh, finishing third in the district. And let's get a win and, and finish off the regular season going into next week. And uh, uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Appreciate it, guys. And that was Coach Cameron Bennett, your Perry Maroon head football coach. Keep it right here as on the other side of the break, we're going to have the district roundup and talk about some uh, district championship uh, uh, matches that are going to occur tonight. Also going to talk about some area schools as well around the Perry area. Then we'll have another break. We'll come back with the uh, starting lineups, the keys to victory tonight for the Maroons as they are at the Alva Goldbugs here in Alva, Oklahoma. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. Let us help you make your dreams come true. We lend money, money for vacations, weddings, homes, autos, trucks, farm equipment, home improvement, and new businesses. Now it's even easier with our online app at bankfvt.com. It's quick, convenient, and secure. First Bank, for all of life. First Bank and Trust Company is an equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hey, Maroon fans. Are you looking for a great dentist? Look no further than Custom Dental and Dr. Dewhurst, and let your fear disappear. Have you heard about the Maroon Fan Special? Be one of the first 10 callers and take advantage of our Let's Get Acquainted appointment and get $100 off any new dental services found needed by Dr. Dewhurst. This Let's Get Acquainted appointment includes exams, x-rays, and a private consultation for only $38. Don't wait. Call 336-2310 right now and tell our team you want the Perry Maroon Fan Special. Go Maroons, go! Duty. Neighbors united for the common good. Honor. The faith that dedication to a noble cause is right, just, and good. Country. A vow to support our nation's people during desperate times. Duty. Honor. Country. We're the Army National Guard. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. Army National Guard. You can. Sponsored by the Oklahoma National Guard. Aired by the Oklahoma Association of Broadcasters and this station. Hi, this is Brock Campbell, owner of Campbell Communications. I'd like to take this time right now to thank our contributing sponsors for the 2014 Perry Maroon football season. DLS Printing and Design, Here It Is, Hair Naturally, The Pin Network, and Thorn Originals. Thank you for your generosity, love, and support of Campbell Communications and the Perry Maroons. Without you, our broadcasts are not possible. Thanks again, and go Maroons! And welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. Uh, now we're to move to the district roundup tonight. Uh, uh, look at the district matchups and all area teams around the Perry area, and it's going to be some district championship bouts tonight. Uh, first one is here in this district. The 8-1, 5-0, and and oh, number 5, number 3, whatever uh, publication you go by, Hennessy, will go to 8-1, and 5-0 and oh, Chisholm tonight, number 11 in 2A. That's going to be a, uh, for the district title. And who's going to get to play uh, Luther or uh, Millwood? I, uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Is that right? Millwood's 3. Millwood's 3. So that would be who plays Millwood and who plays Luther. So that determines if, uh, if the winner plays uh, Luther most likely and the loser will play Millwood. Is that correct? Yeah, because always a 3 okay. and Luther the 4. And 1 plays 4, 2 plays 3. Yep, you got it. Okay. And then the 3 and 6, 1 and 4 Tonkwall Buccaneers are going to go to Pawnee to take on the 1 and 8, 1 and 4 Pawnee Black Bears. Uh, the Newkirk Tigers, we, I just passed their bus coming up here, 4 and 5, 3 and 3. They're going to Oklahoma Christian Academy to take on the Eagles. They're 3 and 6, 2 and 4. Newkirk is in the playoffs. They will finish 4th, and they will have the Millwood Falcons next week. Actually, no, that's not right. They will have, uh, yeah. They'll have OCS. They'll have OCS, yeah, that's right. They'll have the number one Oklahoma Christian Saints. So good luck with that, Newkirk. Yes. Uh, you're 5-4, and 3-2, and two, number 19 Perry Maroons here, of course, uh, up here at Alva in Woods County, 0-9, 0-5, taking on the Alva Goldbugs. Last week, district scores from 2A1. Uh, the Bonnie Black Bears came up here and put it to the Alva Goldbugs, 56-8. Newkirk went to Hennessy and took it on the chin, 62 to seven. Tonkawa went to Crescent and blanked, or not blanked, Crescent. They won 27 to six. Crescent still winless this year, and then Chisholm uh, took it to uh, Perry, 49 to 14, uh, on Senior Night last week in Perry. And other teams around the area, 682, four and five, two and three, number eight. Uh, 
Lawton Eisenhower Eagles are going to be at Stillwater tonight, taking on the 6-3, and 2-3, and three, number 5, number 7, Stillwater Pioneers. Stillwater needs to win that ball game to get into playoffs. Uh, I believe they do. I think that's what, what has to occur because they are 2-3 and three in district. They yeah. have to win that ball game. Last week they took uh, down the Plainsmen of Enid in Stillwater 56-36. to 36. In Class 5A, the uh, number four, three, number four, whatever publication you look at, 9-0, and 6-0 and Guthrie Blue Jays. This is a district title matchup tonight. They're going to Deer Creek to take on the Antlers, 6-3, and 6-0, and number 12, and number 8, whatever publication you look at. That's for the district tonight in Deer Creek. So you, that's a big rivalry too. So now it's a district championship and a rivalry on top of that. So that's going to be pretty heated, it uh, sounds like. Last week, uh, Guthrie uh, took uh, Carl. No, that's not right. They didn't beat Carl Albert last week, did they? It was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, maybe. I got this wrong. So the last week they won. <laughs> I can't remember who they beat, but they beat them pretty pretty solidly. In the class three A, the four and five, two and three Blackwell Maroons. Believe it or not, Blackwell mathematically has a chance to make the playoffs this year. They are four and five, two and three. For that to happen, they have to beat Perkins tonight, and it's at Perkins. Perkins is six and three, three and two. They're number sixteen in Class Three A. It's going to be a tough uh, upward battle. But I, I've been talking to the Blackwell play-by-play, and he says the Blackwell team has really progressed through the year. And we saw them, partner. We they had talent. Yeah, they just Schumann. had to get it progressed. Schumann's and, got 2,500 yards and 27 touchdowns yeah. this year. Uh, last week, Perkins uh, went to Class 2A. Lindsay, number eight in Class 2A, and won a thriller 59-57 to in overtime. Uh, so Perkins got the win on the road last week at Lindsay. In Class A, 7-2, 4-1, the number 14 Morrison Wildcats will take on the 8-2, 4-1, number 20 Hominy Bucks. They're going to go to Hominy and take on the Hominy Bucks. Morrison is in the playoffs. You were uh, right. What was it? Guthrie did win Carl Albert. Okay, right. uh, Guthrie Sorry. did one twenty one six over Carl Albert. Thank you, partner. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kiefer has won that uh, district that Morrison's in. They'll finish first. I think Morrison's going to finish second, if I if I'm correct. Uh, Kiefer beat Morrison last week in Morrison twenty eight to eight. In Class B, the zero and nine zero and five Welch Wildcats will go on the road to take on the seven and two five and two Garber Wolverines. Garber got a very impressive victory last week at Depew. They just took apart Depew seventy-two to forty, and Depew was favored in that matchup. Partner seventy-two to forty, Man, Garber took down Depew. <laughs> in Class C, five and four, four and three, the Covington Douglas Wildcats. They're in the playoffs as well. They will take on, or, and they will go to Fox and take on the eight and one, seven and zero oh Fox Foxes. Yeah, that's I love that that name. <laughs> uh, last week, Covington beat Timberlake seventy-two to twenty-six. Uh, looking at Class 2A, the standings, 2A won the standings. Chisholm and Hennessy tied at first. They will play for the district title tonight. Perry comes in 3-2. and two. They are solidified in third place to finish third this year. Newkirk 3-3. Three and three. They will finish fourth. Tonkwall 1-4. and four. Pawnee 1-4. And, and Alba 0-5. Oh and, and that's a look, look at the district uh, matchups tonight and the area schools. We're going to take another break, come back with the keys to the game and the opening or the starting lineups, and then your opening kickoff between your Perry Maroons here at the Alba Goldbugs. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. When you walk through a hospital's doors, you have high expectations. At Stillwater Medical Center, our physicians, nurses, and staff understand. And we're ready to accommodate you. Our team provides the personal care you expect from a hometown hospital. And supports it with cutting-edge medical technology. It's the patient experience perfected. Learn more about our mission at stillwatermedical.com. Integrity, respect, professionalism, and a genuine caring attitude is exactly what you can expect from us at Brown Decker Funeral Home. We are committed to being available to you every step of the way. We know that losing a loved one is never easy, but it's our privilege, responsibility, and our calling to help ease this process as much as possible. We are avid supporters of the Paramaroons and welcome you to come or stop by. We're located at 1010 North 7th or call us at 580-336-4444. Brown Duggar Funeral Home. We are here for you. And welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma, Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. Just got to let that play and get in the spirit now and get in the zone. That was... You got you to let that get to the bridge. Absolutely. Uh, but we're back here, uh, getting ready to get ready for opening kickoff. We got some crowd filing in finally from Perry. Uh, the early start has uh, made it, taken a, taken an effect on the Perry Maroon fans. Let me see if we've got the the band out here. 
I don't see the band. I don't think the band has made it uh, to for the trip this week. So, but we got some fans in the in the stands. I also want to wish a happy birthday to one of my cousins, uh, Randy Rupp. It was his uh, birthday today, so I didn't have a chance to get on Facebook and wish him a, a, a happy birthday. So, happy birthday to Randy Rupp uh, there. Um, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take on the lineups here. As I don't know what we're clapping for. Maybe they were clapping because I said Randy had a birthday. But uh, we're going to do this Dr. Spring Atlanta, but we're in the booth, so we're going to keep talking. So we're going to do the opening lineups. First for the visiting Perry Maroons on offense, the quarterback is number 13, the sophomore Dawson Padilla. The running back, number six, senior Brian Hatfield, wide receivers. Number one, the senior Braden Sweet. Number 20, the senior Joe Rupp. And number 15, the sophomore Drake Dell. Tied in, welcome back to number five, sophomore Austin Reyes. But uh, they will not use him very much on offense tonight. He's mostly going to be on the defensive side, and same with Garrett. They're going to rotate in with each other to keep them fresh for yeah, next week. That's a good idea. Uh, so there we go. So <coughs> that's why uh, Garrett is either going to start or Austin's going to start. Uh, Coach didn't know one or the other. If we're going to do a two back set, yeah, it'll be Garrett. If we go four wide, it'll be Austin to start. Okay. So uh, t- uh, the left tackle, number 71, senior Matt Jones. Left guard, 52, senior Dylan Buck. The center, number 70, uh, sophomore Parker Goschak. The right guard, number 73, senior Barrett Swant. And the right tackle, number tackle 56, senior Andrew Randall. That is your starters for the offense. On the defensive side of the ball for the Maroons. Defensive end, number 55, Devin Blancett. Defensive tackle, number 42, Garrett Byer. Defensive tackle, 53, senior Spencer Hartwig. The other DN, number 56, Andrew Randall. And the linebackers for the Maroons, 52, senior Dylan Buck. And the senior Brian Hatfield, number 6. The Sam position, number five, sophomore Austin Ray is in the wheel position, number one, senior Braden Sweet. Corners will be number four, sophomore Liam Clausen, and number 20, senior Joe Rupp. And the free safety will be number 15, sophomore Drake. Garrett Byer will be doing the kicking duties on kickoff and punting, and place kicking will be Dawson Padilla if we do place kicking, kick return and punt return, Braden Sweet and Brian Hatfield. So there's the starters for Perry. Now for the home team. The senior night laden uh, Alva Goldbugs. The offense, the quarterback will be number three, five nine, one thirty five, sophomore Austin Schlar. Running back number twelve, six two, one eighty, junior Travis Costello. The running back number twenty, five nine, one hundred sixty pounds, senior Chris Wheeler. The halfback or the the H back or the tight end number eleven, five eleven, one ninety, freshman Kobe Barnett. Wide receiver number twenty two, five six, one thirty five, freshman Davion Murrow. The other wide receiver number twenty seven, five eight, one forty, sophomore Seth Millage. Left tackle, number 56, 6'1", 240, freshman Trevor Allison. Left guard, number 61, 5'9", 170, senior Bryant Venice Dell. Sen- uh, center, number 74, 5'10", 235, junior Tristan Kayot. And right guard, number 53 or 42, we don't know what number he's yeah. going to go, 6'2", 230, junior Terrell Burton. The right tackle, number 75, 5'10", 250, senior Aaron Pierce. That's the offense for the Alva Goldbergs, uh, two back set, uh, two back offset eyes, what they what they run. On the defensive side of the ball, the defensive lineman, 61, senior Bryant Venisdell. The other lineman, they run four down lines, so it'll be, uh, the other one will be 75, senior Aaron Pierce. 63, Darian Smith, 6'225", freshman. As you can see, they are young, as I keep re- reading here. Uh, the other down lineman, 55, 5'11", 205, sophomore, Tanner White. The uh, hybrid linebacker is what we think is going to be number 12, Travis Costello. Then the other backers will be uh, Terrell Burton, the junior, number 53 or 42, number 11, uh, Kobe Barnett, the freshman, uh, number 31, 5'11", 185, sophomore, Ethan Harsman. And the cornerbacks will be number 27, 5'8", 140, self, sophomore, Seth Millage, and number 21, 5'10", 140, sophomore Hayden Caldwell. The safety will be number three, uh, 5'9", 135, sophomore Austin oh, Slar. Yeah, Kickoff soft. duties will be Chris <laughs> Wheeler. Punter will be Hayden Caldwell. And the punt return and kick, routines, kick return will be Seth Millage and Hayden Caldwell. So that's your starting lineups for the Alva Goldbucks tonight and your Perry Maroons. Uh, once again, Perry coming in with a 5-4 and four record, 3-2 and two in the district, solidified third place uh, finish in the district this year. Alva 0-9, 0-5 overall uh, in the district. So let's talk about the tonight's uh, keys to the game, Mike. Let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and divert it to you, and uh, let's start with you. What's your keys tonight? Well, uh, come out, uh, run a very executed, high-executed offense. Get ready for the, you know, your, make, make it a show, a showcase for the next week to kind of get your momentum going uh, and 
that's number one. Run out, execute football, uh, execute the offense really well. Uh, don't don't play just because you're in the playoffs. Don't play like you are in the playoffs. Act like this game is going to get you in. That'll make you play a whole lot better. Exactly. Uh, the second is they hold on to the dang football. Seven seven turnovers I believe we had last week and five the week before. That's that's twelve in two games. That's and, too and, many. And I talked to to coach about the turnovers and and about the struggles with uh, Dawson. You know we've alluded to he's only sophomore. He's only fifteen years old. I got in. I got up to him today. Gave him a hug. I told him, "Hey, just keep working through it. Yeah. Love you, bud. Um, you know, just learn from your mistakes." And he was really upbeat in the locker room a, a lot more than I saw last week. Last week he was kind of, he didn't say anything to me. He was in his own world. Yeah. Um, so it was nice to see him a little bit more relaxed. Um, and I, I went through and I, I shook everybody's hands uh, and told him, "Hey, go out there and and just kick somebody in the tail. Don't go out there and just know that you're in the playoffs and that's good enough." You know, take Absolutely. some take five weeks of frustration out on this in, on this team. Yeah, and you know, don't play down to their level like we did at Newkirk. And I think they all understand that. So I think we're going to see a different uh, ball team because they're they're frankly they're tired of getting kicked in the mouth. Yeah. So um, focus and and just I want to see some heart tonight. That's an, one of my that's my biggest key tonight is I want to see some heart with this team. You know, don't worry about wrestling. Don't worry about basketball. If you're going to go to those, to those avenues after this, let's yeah. let's let's ride this train as far as we can take exactly. it. Exactly. You still got another game. So tonight's officials: uh, the referee Jim Unruh, uh, the umpire Don Schieber, uh, linesman Robert Wood, judge Kyle Johnston, and back judge Gary Oswalt. And they take minute timeouts after each dead ball. So it's going to be perfect for us to get our timeouts in tonight. And they Kyle were first. they were. Uh, uh, gracious to come up here and give us one of their cards, and we really uh, appreciate that as well, as they they know we're trying to do a job too and bring you a broadcast. So, Perry will kick off. They won the toss, and uh, incomplete. I'll yes, that. Perry won the toss. They deferred, uh, so they're going to kick off. Alba will get the ball. Alba will be working from the south to the north. Perry will be kicking off to the south and defending the north goal. So back to kick off now. Garrett Byer. From his own 40. God, you're with us, and we're underway here in Alba. It's a short kick taken by the up man about the 32 yard line. He goes right down right there, so he takes a knee, and it's going to be first and 10 Alva from their own 32 yard line as we start this ball game. Austin Slar will bring the, tr bring the Ooh, troops yeah. out to start this ball game, and Perry comes out, breaks the huddle. Just underway here. Alva Goldbugs and the, your Perry Maroons. District 2A1 matchup. Oh, did nothing happen? Yeah, nothing happened. Sorry. <laughs> I was Austin, getting my chair situated. Austin Slar is under – actually, no, I don't know. Yeah, Slar is under center. He's just so little. I couldn't tell – he takes a snap. He's going to pitch it to uh, – that's uh, Costello, and he's going to be stacked up on the line of scrimmage Ooh. and goes nowhere. Everybody. They might have given him one yard, a very generous one yard, but they are going to – they're going to spot him at the 32-yard line, so it's going to be no gain. Brings up the second and ten. It was just a, a simple pitch, and he went – Right up the middle of the gut, and Perry, just a host of Perry defenders, just uh, just yeah. don't fill those gaps there, partner. Absolutely. And, but, partner, this is kind of different. It's like a disconnect. We can't hear the crowd. I don't really like this. I don't but either. <laughs> I, no I, offense I, to I, I, like just, to, I like to hear our yeah. crowd. I like to be in, in, in with them and outside and, and join. It's strange. It is strange. So, second and ten for the Gold Bugs at their own 32. Slar under center. He's going to take it. He's going to be back to pass. I actually handed it off. He, oh, he fooled me. That was to number 11, Kobe Barnett. It was... It looked like he was going to play action fast, but he uh, passed, but he handed off to Barnett around the, the right side of the line of scrimmage, and he actually lost a yard, so it's going to bring up third and 11 for the Gold Bucks. Yeah. I knew I shouldn't have uh, taken Barnett off. I didn't think he was going to run it. So it'll be second and 11 for the Gold Bucks. Or third and 11, excuse me. Slar under center. One receiver to the far side, one to the near two back set. He's back to pass, straight back to pass. Trying to set up a screen. And it's intercepted oh. by Garrett Byer at the 26 yard line. Falls forward to the 25. First and 10 for Perry at the Alba 25 yard line. Just playing center field. Yeah, that was a set up for the screen. Garrett sniffed it out immediately and just threw it right to him. Good play by Garrett. So Perry set up shot first and 10 from the Alba 25 yard line. Boy, can't ask for anything better to start here. Padilla uh, fumbles the snap. He's going to throw it down to Joe Rupp around the right side of the line of scrimmage. He gets the catch. He gets up to maybe the 20-yard line, so maybe a pickup of five yards. It brings up a second and five for Perry. 
brings up a second and five for the Maroons. Doss Padilla in the shotgun formation. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. Or actually, four receivers. Back to pass. Looking, looking. Passes down the center of the oh, field. Oh, got it. It's on the tipped tip. by the Alba Goldbugs and then uh, juggled and caught by Braden Sweet for a touchdown. Wow. That's a 20 yard touchdown strike, and Perry's on the board. Wow. Yeah, that might be an omen tonight, bud. Yeah, that's, that is probably going to be the way it goes for Alvin for us tonight. A tip pass and just bounce right into Sweet's hand. Great concentration and uh, just touchdown. Two plays. That's all it took. And it was it was a badly it was poorly thrown it was, uh, it wasn't it didn't have the height to get over that uh, that linebacker he actually tipped the ball and tipped it right to Braden Sweden in the end zone and it was it was caught so yeah he's probably thinking I got my hands on it and still nothing good so we got two receivers now for the two point conversion one back set given to Brian Hatfield around the left side he's going to walk in and he's good it's eight to nothing we're going to take a timeout you're listening to Perry Maroon football on Triple Play Sports. Hey, Maroon fans, are you looking for a great dentist? Look no further than Custom Dental and Dr. Dewhurst and let your fear disappear. Have you heard about the Maroon fan special? Be one of the first 10 callers and take advantage of our Let's Get Acquainted appointment and get $100 off any new dental services found needed by Dr. Dewhurst. This Let's Get Acquainted appointment includes exams, x-rays, and a private consultation for only $38. Don't wait. Call 336-2310 right now and tell our team you want the Perry Maroon fan special. Go Maroons, go! Now Welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma. Brock what I've been Campbell. doing all year, Brock, is you tell me in game 10. <laughs> Brock Campbell alongside Mike Saw. Well, I made another spreadsheet today, and I told you I <laughs> should have done that to begin with, but, you know, it's on the job trading for me, too, even though I'm the boss, but <laughs> Anyways, it's eight to nothing, and Perry quickly on the board. Garrett Byer is set to kick off. There's the kick. It's a better kick. It's going to be taken about the 25, 30. That's uh, Costello, 35, and he's going to be punched down hard at the 36 yard line. Actually, he got up to the 40. It looks like. Yes, yeah, so that was. Uh... Nope, they're going to mark him back here. Yeah, they're going to mark him at the 36. I guess his knee went down at the 36. So that kickoff is a, a 35 30, yarder. 35 yeah. yarder. And it brings up first and ten for Alva from their own 36-yard line. And, boy, you know, those kids are just thinking, man, we're 0-9. And we get in the passing lane and just it still goes yeah, wrong for yeah, us. Yeah, I know. So, Slar under center. Receiver goes in motion to the left side. And we've got movement. And it's going to be for, uh, first and 15 for Alva. It's going to be a off oh, it's going to be offside on Perry. I guess they got us in the neutral zone. I didn't see anybody in the neutral zone. Did you? No, I didn't. And that receiver in motion, number 83, and we don't have an 83. So our well, apologies to the Alva. Anybody listening in Alva, we don't have a number 83 on our roster. We're going to make it up, I guess. Okay. Slark comes I'll let up. you do that. Slar comes under center. Two back set on the offset eye. Receiver goes in motion to the left side. Gets the snap. He's going to hand it to the Wheeler. first man through. That's Wheeler over there on the left side. And he's stacked up, and he's going to lose about two yards back to about the 39-yard line. Actually, probably, yeah, about two yards back to the 39. That's going to bring up second and probably about seven for the Gold Bugs. And, you know, this is what we've seen on film, partner. They they run that offset eye, but there's just no blocking. It is jumbled. They're, they, they they just don't block. I know. They don't, yeah, they just have there's problems all over the field for the poor Gold Bugs here. You can try to see why their record is where it is. And, we're, and we don't mean that by any disrespect. It's just, you know, it's a it's a young team. Yeah, absolutely. 15 so, sophomores and freshmen brings up at least. The second and seven. Charlie gets it. He's going to hand it to the first man through, and he goes nowhere as he goes right up the gap, and it's filled nicely by about three Maroons. Don't see who was on the tackle. We're way up here, so it's going to be interesting to see. Might have been uh, It might have been uh, uh, Hartwig in there. Byer was in there, I bet. And Byer and... So far up, I, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just it's just estimated guesses. I mean, we're going to be in a nice press box in a couple of years. They're going to have field turf. It's going to be really nice when we come back in two years. But they're uh, in the, in the uh, restoration process and rebuilding uh, on everything right now. <laughs> so uh, Slar comes to center, two back set, one receiver to the near side. That's the Perry sideline. He's going to give it to the first man through. That is Wheeler, yeah. and he gets off of one tackle, gets across the 45, falls forward to the 46. He's close to the first down. He might be a little short. We'll call it third in inches, it looks like, upcoming for the Gold Bugs. 
Actually, that might have been third down. It might be fourth in inches now. They're going to believe so. Take a little look at this and measure. I'm looking at right down the right down this field because I'm right here, and he had to get to the 46 and a half, and he's at the 46. Mike, I think he's yeah. Short. Well, Brock, I'm looking down at your. Looks like the scoreboard says seven nothing, and it is eight nothing, and we were getting notifications from Robin and Debbie Bole. Thank you for that. They're right in front of me. Hi, Robin. Hi, Bo hi, Debbie. Yes, it's eight to nothing. It's eight. <laughs> so we got uh, Johnny on the spot, people here in our crowd. So it's it's eight to nothing. Yeah, eight nothing. We got the two point conversion half. That's the scoreboard. It's eight. So the scoreboard is wrong. It's eight to nothing. I can't do anything about the uh, the clock operator. Yeah, they're about three doors down. No, so, no, no band pun intended. We had somebody uh, on Max Preps in our. Uh, Alva as the victor last week. So yeah, and then Oklahoma said we got 20 points for uh, Chisholm. We should have just uh, taken that. So it is fourth and <laughs> inches. Slar under center, two back set, and Perry jumped, and uh, they're going to get the free I five. I think they drew him off. Yeah, um, it's going to be offside. Perry, it's going to be uh, first down for Alva. Come on, guys, that's, that's a the mental first, mistake. First, first down of the ball game, and that's a free five, and that's too easy, partner. They get it back to the up to the 49 yard line of Perry. So it's first and ten for Alva. Yeah, it's just a mental error. That's another key I didn't. I wanted to get to. We ran out of time. Just the mental mistakes. Penalties weren't as bad last week, but there was a couple false starts and offsides that you know you just you just can't have. I know it seems like well you got to play perfect. No, those are absolutely mental. You just can't have those. Alba has it first and ten from the Perry Maroon forty-nine yard line. Two back set on the offset eye. Schaller gets it. He's back to pass under pressure. He's going to throw down the uh, far sideline. It intended for number 81, Meyer. It was overthrown. Good coverage there, Drake Dell, and, and help on the uh, uh, on on the on um, Joe Rupp is in coverage, but Drake Dell over the top. There we go. That's what I was trying <laughs> to say. Good coverage by both of those young men. So it's going to bring second and ten for Perry, or not for Perry for Alva <laughs> Man, <that's laughs> at a, the Perry Maroon 49. It's a rough, one. It's a rough night. You know, with the prank and the early start, yeah, it's been rough for me. So, second and ten, Slar under center. One receiver to the near side. He's going to give it to his first man through. Then Harsman. he's going to bounce off. Uh, the Harsman bounces off, 40, 35. And Joe Rupp saves the day and saves a touchdown tackle, t touchdown saving tackle at the 30-yard line. He got a 19-yard pickup. Actually, they're going to call it 18-yard pickup and a first down for Alva. And that hole was really big on the left side, partner. Somebody missed an assignment. Yeah, somebody missed an assignment and then – Harzman broke a tackle uh, at the point of contact. and yeah, Coach Bennett's not real happy. He's he's about five yards out on the field yelling at his defense. And Yeah, that's you got you got a tackle in the hole right there, and that's a no-yard gain. It was a simple counter play to mm -hmm. the left side, and that's the biggest play Alva's had probably in a while. So first and ten for Alva. No disrespect from the 31 of the Perry Marine 31. Slar in the shotgun now. He's going to be back to pass looking. He's going to fire short, and it's incomplete. And it intended for I can't what's that number? Is that eighty one again? Is that Meyer? Uh, Looks like it is. Yeah. It intended by for Meyer right down the seam, uh, dropping back in coverage for Perry. I think it was Dylan Buck. It was Dylan Buck uh, dropping back in coverage, and it, it falls incomplete. Second down and ten for Alva at the Maroon thirty one yard line. One thing I do like about Alva's uniforms, they're easier to read. The numbers are the easiest we've had in a while. Nice contrast. Yes, Slar in the good. shotgun again, one back set, one receiver to the near side, one at the far. He back to pass, going to throw a slant. Wow. It's completed, and it gets to about the 20, no, we'll call it the 23-yard line. That's a pickup of eight yards, brings up a, a third and three for Alva. It's 84, that was McOsker. That was McOsker, Noah McOsker, the junior, on the slant right over slant route on the left side over there. The honest partner, I didn't even have him on the film last week. Didn't even see him. Maroons lead at eight to nothing. How many yards did you give him? That was eight. Eight yards. And they're passing a lot more than I Slar thought they Slar in the shotgun again. One, re uh, Two receivers, one in the near, one to the far. He's back to pass, going to throw that slant route again, but that falls incomplete. They went back to the well to try it one more time. Better coverage over there, uh, and it falls incomplete. It brings up a fourth and three for the Bucks. They have fixed the scoreboard. It is eight to nothing now, so go. our fans should be happy. I'll take your word for it, Brock. <laughs> you got to I can't see it. They should have just – what all glass here? With, yeah, with that, that would have been a good that idea. Without that partition right there. Yeah, but. Well, this was probably built maybe when my dad worked Long on it. Long time ago. <laughs> it could have been. So it's fourth and three for the Gold Bugs. Slar under center. He's going to give it to uh, – that is number – Colwell, I Colwell believe. Colwell on the right side. He's going to be drug out of bounds, and he is very close to a first down. He is tackled at the 16-yard line. I think they got the first down. Oh, man. 
Uh, pretty good run on the right side, just a wide, wide run. and Yeah, they give him exactly speed. three yards and a first down for the gold bugs. Because so I think it was at the 19, was it not? Yeah. Actually, no, no, no. It was 19 at the, or 20. It was at the 20. Yeah, we'll say it was a 19. So they gave him exactly three yards. And a first down for the uh, Alba Goldbugs at the Maroon 16-yard line. Schlar under center, two back set. He gets a snap. He's going to give it the reverse over there to Caldwell on the left side. Got a couple blocks, but not enough. Good, good pursuit over there for the Perry Maroon defense to limit maybe to a two-yard gain. And we saw that in film. They run that sometimes on that reverse handoff to their other uh, halfback, and it goes for maybe one yard. So we'll bring up third and, or excuse me, second and nine for the Bugs from the Perry Maroon 15-yard line. 6.05 to go in the first quarter. Perry up 8 to nothing. It's a long drive for uh, Alva. And that's what happens with their offense. Is they're just a uh, clock chewing up uh, offense. Now yeah, to be successful, that's what they have to do. Slaughter to center, two back set, one receiver to the near side. He's going to get the handoff to Harzman up the middle. And he might get uh, a couple as he – oh, actually, they're going to mark him at the 16. They only gave him one yard. That will bring up a third and eight for the Bucks. Just plugging those holes nicely. They're not, Alva's not been able to find anything between the tackles yet uh, thus far in this game. No, and I don't – Spencer's a uh, – he's not a big guy in there, but he's tough to block. He's and, tenacious. And him, him and Byer, they're kind of on the inside with – so Hatfield fill in the middle. It'll be tough to run to the middle. Alva partner. comes out with two receivers. Now we've got one coming on. They may have to take a timeout. It's two back set. Charlotte under center. He's going to get the snap back to pass. He's looking. He's got uh, – he had a receiver in the corner over there uncovered and might have been a he touchdown, but he went the short route, and it was complete to the 12-yard line. I didn't see what the number was. 20. That was 20. Like Wheeler, yeah. That was Wheeler on the reception over there on the left side. They're going to mark him up to the 12-yard line. So we're going to say it's going to be a fourth and – Oh, we're going to say fourth and six, maybe seven. Yeah, that was a good uh, reason. Maybe the reason he didn't see the guy in the in the end zone it was a good uh, good pressure by I think I want to say Randall or Blancet over there on the right side uh, to cause him to have to go short. I think they've had two third down uh, plays, haven't they? And they've converted yeah. one. Right, and they got one fourth down. Oh, that's right. I need to be better prepared here. So we're going to take a timeout with him. You're listening to Perry Marin Football on Triple Play Sports. To win football games, it takes great coaching, hard work, and talent. To stay in business for 19 years, Fans Chevrolet GMC Buick of Perry has valued its customers, providing them with friendly, outstanding service and the best prices around. Our customers tell us we're a comfortable place to buy a car. If you haven't experienced the Vance Perry difference, come by for a visit. You'll be glad you did. Fans Chevrolet GMC Buick, family owned and operated for 19 years, where it's comfortable to buy a car. And welcome back to Alva. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. Perry leads us an eight to nothing. Alva facing a fourth and six from the Perry Maroon twelve yard line. So see if the defense can get a stop here. They come out with two receivers, one to the near, one to the far. Two back set. And Slar will go under center. As the referee puts it into motion. Jim Unruh. Schlar back to pass, straight back to pass. Tried to set up a screen, didn't have it, and he throws short, and it's incomplete intended for Costello, and Perry holds, and they'll get the ball. First and 10 from their own 12-yard line, and they that's the second time they, they've tried to to uh, throw the screen pass, but Perry has been very disciplined on that play. Yeah, they have, and I uh, kind of expected maybe they'd run it again, but what's the clock, partner? Clock is 4.30. 4:30. I'm, 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 I'm having to help my partner here because he can't see the the uh, the scoreboard. So what do they have us marked? Dawson Petit at the 12-yard line. Dawson Petit brings the troops out. He's uh, in the shotgun formation, one back set, four receivers to the near, to the far. He gets the snaps. Going to hand it to Brian Hatfield around the right side. He gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage and dropped there for no gain. Brings up second and ten for Perry. Just didn't get any blocking on that side over there on that on that senior laden uh, offensive line there, partner. Yeah, I was looking down. I'm sorry, partner. It's got we try to get the situation. This happened so fast. Second and ten. Dawson in the shotgun formation. One receiver or four receivers. One back set. He gets a snap. He's going to fire throw. to the slant over there. Drake Dell. He's got it complete across the 25. Dragging tacklers across the 25 to about the oh, we'll call it the 20. 
They'll call it the 27-yard line. That is a 15-yard pickup and a first down for Perry. Their first of the evening. That's only the fourth play, too. Probably. Only fourth play. <laughs> so first and ten for Perry exactly. at the Alva at their own. Uh, excuse me, their own 26-yard line. 27. Padilla in the shotgun, one back set, four receivers, two to the near, two to the far. Same formation. Gets a snap. He's going to hand it to Brian Hatfield right up the gap, trying to get around the corner. He got a little bit of room, got to the 30, fell forward to maybe the 31-yard line. They're going to give him right at the 30, so it's going to be a three-yard pickup officially in a, a second and seven for the Maroons. Yeah, going, taking a step back, that throw by Padilla was a strike to Dale on the, on the, on the far sideline, a nice little curl route. By Dale, and he dragged tackles, a good play, and then Hatfield made a nice little run. Same set here, one back set. Uh, shotgun, four receivers, two to the near, two to the far back to pass. Padilla, short pass to Braden Sweet across the 40, 45, got a blocker, and uh, ushered out of bounds at the 49-yard line. That is a 19-yard uh, pickup and a first down on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Another, just a little five, simple five-yard out. Uh, clear out on the uh, kind of a mesh or a flood. You know, you clear out the other side and have Sweet come open on the on the far sideline down here, and he just did the rest. And it looked like he had Skubinek out there blocking for him nicely Skubinek's there. Skubinek's played. Yeah, he's been out there tonight with the first team. Surprised to see that. Four Good receivers plan. again, two to the near, two to the far, one back set. Now kind of a pistol formation. Padilla in the pistol. Gets a snap. He's going to fire. He's going to fire incomplete. Slar in coverage. Intended for Joe Rupp. Could have called Slar for pass interference, but – you're not going to call him that because he had the inside position, and if anything, he had, you know, Joe Rupp was playing DB right there. Yeah, yeah, but that was uh, that was uh, Padilla's first misfire of the night. He's four for five now. So it brings up second and ten for the Maroons from their own 49-yard line. I kind of like this starting out, giving him. We know Brian can run. We got to get Padilla confidence for next week. Four receivers, two to the near, two to the far, one back set, pistol formation. Padilla gets a snap. He's back to pass, looking, throwing that slant route again. It's Skubinek. complete to Skubinek across the 45, Skub. and he's going to be hit down at the 46-yard line. That's a seven-yard pickup. It's going to be a manageable uh, third and three for the Maroons. They're seeing something on those slant plays. That was to the left side of the line of scrimmage and just the left slant. But they're seeing, uh, you know, Alva's giving them uh, that room right there, partner. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Skubinek, like, I think that's his second, first or second catch of the year, partner. So it brings up a third and three for the Perry Maroons at the Alva 46. Good to see him getting involved. Four receivers, two to the near, two to the far pistol formation. Padilla back to pass. He's going to throw the fade route. He's looking for Drake Dell over there, and Drake just mm. couldn't get there. Uh, pass was a little in front of him and, and kind of behind him. Falls incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth and three. So let's see what Perry does. And <laughs> that was a tough pass to catch. I mean – he put it where nobody else could catch it except uh, Drake, but uh, unfortunately it fell incomplete. It's going to bring it fourth and three. Perry's going to go for it. I totally agree with this decision. You oh, know, yeah. Put it on your defense here. Absolutely. Uh, if you don't get this. So it's going to be four receivers, two to the near, two to the far. Once again, pistol formation. Hatfield uh, behind Dawson Padilla. He gets a snap. He's firing. It's complete to Braden Sweet over there, left side. Makes one miss. Gets across the 40. 35. 30. Uh, makes a juke. 25. Ushered out of bounds at the 23 yard line. That's a first and 10. That is a, uh, from the 49 to the 23, that is a 23 yard pickup and a first down for Perry. Yeah, it's just another simple. Uh, just a uh, kind of that more that more looked like a flag route maybe or a stop than an out because he was just kind of one step up and out. And Actually, that was a 26 yard gain. Sorry. Okay. 26 and from the 23 is the 49. Sweet, as we know he can do, can run after the catch, and he's got a lot of those tonight. So first and ten for Perry. Four receivers again to the near, to the far, one back set. Dawson Padilla gets a shotgun snap, gets a, over there to Joe Rupp, makes one miss, gets across the to the 15 yard line. Uh, maybe to the 14. They're going to mark him about the 14-yard line. That is a nine-yard pickup, and boy, almost a nine-and-a-half-yard pickup. Now they're going to give him. Are they going to give him ten? It's a ten-yard pickup and a first down. Wow, Joe Rupp with the first down catch and carry after the catch got that yak yardage and another first down for Perry. I'm liking this. This. Fire and uh, run and shoot offense. I like it. Four receivers again, two to the near, two to the far, one back set, back to pass again as Dawson Padilla is going to throw the fade route over here to oh, – uh, that was to Skuvenek, and he had it just for a minute. It falls incomplete, but good coverage over there for Alva. But Scooby, yeah, Scooby has come to play tonight. Yeah. Um, even though he dropped that one, it's going to bring up second and ten. But, you know, he's going to be one of your featured guys next year, yeah. so you got to get him in the fold. 6'3", six, 6'4", six, just a junior and – that's another thing about making playoffs that helps. You get it's kind of like a bowl, mini bowl. You know, you get extra practices because otherwise, you know, season's over, practice is over. 
But that's good. Good for Skuvenek to get in the game here. Second and 10 from the Alba 14 yard line. Back to pass again as Padilla is going to throw the slant right to Braden Sweet. And it's caught and he broke a tackle. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Perry from the 12 yard line, it looks like. That's a 12 yard strike to uh, from Dawson Padilla to Braden Sweet. And Perry's on the board once again. It's 14 to nothing, Perry. That's Braden's second reception. Uh, for a touchdown and Dawson's second touchdown pass. So it is 14 to nothing. And let's see if Perry's going to take a two point conversion or going to try an extra point here. Looks like they're going to go for two. Dawson Badia is the place kicker. And just thread the needle there. He had yeah, two defenders thread it right nicely. And, you know, Braden, you're not going to go down with one hit. He gets the snap, gives it to Garrett right up the gut. That should be good. And oh, he fought, he's whoa. no good. He's right at the goal line. And the two-point conversion is no good. Perry leads at 14 to nothing. We'll keep it right here. We've got 115 to go in the quarter. And uh, Perry doing basically whatever they want right now, partner. And, and you alluded to that you li you're liking this offense. Me too. And, and, you know, this is good to see. We were wondering if we were going to play to our competition tonight or if we were going to come out, you know, ready to go on fire, getting ready for playoffs. And, that's what has happened so far. Yeah, they've come out uh, like uh, like gangbusters almost and uh, just kind of run roughshod over the Gold Bugs right now. And That was a 10-play, 88-yard drive and covered three minutes and 30 seconds too. So very efficient drive. So 14 to nothing. Perry leads this one with uh, 1.15 to go first quarter. Garrett Byer will be back to kick off his third kickoff of the evening because Perry won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So he'll be back to kick off from the 40-yard line. Got a decent crowd for Perry. Come, uh, came from the long trip, and they have filed in nicely. Don't have the band here tonight, so that's the only thing we're missing. There's the uh, whistle to play in motion. Garrett puts a boot into it. It's a short kick down the center of the field, taking about the 25, across the 30. That is uh, Costello gets across the 35, falls forward to maybe the 37-yard line. And that's where they're going to mark it, at the 37. Another 35-yard kick. Another 35-er. And Alva will take over from their own 37-yard line, first and 10. Schlar will bring the, troop, bring the troops out and uh, see what Alva can do on this drive. Perry has played pretty good defense. They've given a couple yards up. Um, one play, one big play really has – it's the yeah, only – Yeah, that 18-yard run. Yeah. That's about it. And then, you know, the, the one first down was a penalty, and then they went for it on fourth and got it. So two receivers come out, one to the near, one to the far. we got two back set on the offset eye formation. Schlar's in the, in, the, in the pistol, actually, in the shotgun. Back to pass again is Schlar. He's going to uh, take his uh, safety route over there on the left side of the line of scrimmage, and we got a late uh -huh. hit out of bounds on Perry. And it was a short gain for Costello to the 40. He'll give him three yards to the 40. But uh, there's going to be a late hit tacked on here. It's going to be first down for Alva, and just lack of focus there for Perry. Yeah, something you, that, you just don't need to do that. He was already yep. going out of bounds, and he pushed him. While he was out of bounds and just, just an unnecessary foul. So officially three yards on the, on the play and then add 15 to that. That gives Alva the third first down of the ball game. With 59.3 to go in the first quarter, Perry leads at 14 to nothing. And Alva once again gets the ball into Perry Maroon territory. Still walking. And they're going to place the ball at the Perry Maroon 44-yard uh, line. Yep, just that's and what it, happened. You know, the second was, one. I was watching it right over here. It was kind of a... It looked That's, to me. It I had kind my, of a tap. Yeah, it didn't really look like a personal it. foul to me, but I know, you know I you're agree. gonna get those calls on when you're on the road. So I agree. I mean Slar goes under center now, offset eye formation again. He gets a snap, he's gonna roll to his left, he's gonna fire down the field, and it's high incomplete uh, intended for Meyer. He had my Meyer, Meyer had a step on Drake Dell, who has the height disadvantage, and if that's a better thrown ball because Drake mistimed his jump, that might be a touchdown. Yeah, and what Alva coming out. A little differently than I expect. I think that's their eighth pass already. I think they're reverting back to their team last year. Yeah. <laughs> which we didn't think we would see, but not based on the last two game film that I saw. They ran just ran. Pretty sure that Ty Hooper, like you said, I think he plays for NWSU. Um, because you saw him throwing the ball down there. It might have been Dylan Hatzel too from Hennessy. He's one of the coaches okay. uh, here. Yeah. Uh, he's a young coach, but he coaches for Alva too, so uh, now Slar gets the uh, snap. He's going to hand it to Costello. He's going to be met in the at the line of scrimmage, pushes forward to, for maybe a yard, but nothing doing right up the middle of that uh, uh, defensive uh, line for the Perry Maroons. They gave him officially one yard, so it'll be a second and nine for Alva. 
just nothing sexy. It's it's hard to call a, a, a team like this because it's it's it. There's nothing sexy. No, <laughs> there's nothing nothing good to really you know get excited about. You know they don't. They're not a big play team at all. So under 20 seconds to go. Slower under center. Two back set under the eye, uh, offset eye. He gets a uh, snap. He's going to roll to his left again. He's going to fire. It's complete to Wheeler over there on the left side. And he gets up across the 40 to the 39. And we'll give him officially a pickup of five yards and bring up a third down. And that's the last play of the first quarter. And your Perry Maroons lead at 14 to nothing. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. Does hearing those killer football hits make you hurt? At Ortho, Oklahoma, you don't have to be a college athlete to be treated like a star. And you don't have to go to a metropolitan area to access quality treatment. Enjoy big-time care from bone and joint specialists with hometown friendliness and ease. Experience state-of-the-art equipment like our latest open-sided MRI, world-class treatment, and on-site physical therapy. Visit us at orthook.com. At Ortho, Oklahoma, we're keeping you together. Follow up with your team and favorite players in the Perry Daily Journal, supplying your local news for 120 years. The PDJ is a proud supporter of Perry Maroon athletes, from headlines to classifieds, covering Noble County for more than a century. Pick up a paper or check out our e-edition today to keep current on all Noble County news. Visit our website at www.pdjnews.com to subscribe and friend us on Facebook. And welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. I want to let you know this game is sponsored in part by Devon Energy, who take pride in supporting local communities and events where they where they operate. Visit DevonEnergy.com today to learn more about how they're producing energy in a responsible manner. Devon Energy, where commitment runs deep. And Alva just take the, took the snap, and they ran that play. The first play they ran against Pawnee, tried to get that screen over there the wide, with the receiver coming out of the backfield over there by his lonesome. If that's a better play then that might be a game-breaker there for Costello as he had green over there. But it falls incomplete, and it's bring a fourth down for the Gold Bucks. Yeah, tried to get everybody going one way while they come back and throw the other way. Classic, you know, roll out misdirection, but mm-hmm. when, we weren't falling for it. So fourth down, and we'll call it – Actually, I guess it was a bad throw. <laughs> it's about fourth. That's our ball, partner. Oh, it is. That was fourth down. Excuse me. Oh, my bad. Uh, Dawson BD gets it up. Brian Hamble to wrap through the middle. 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. See ya. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Perry. And that is a 51 yard touchdown run. 61 yard touchdown run. 59. Uh, excuse we were me. on the 41. It was on the 41. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. 59 yard touchdown run by Brian Hamble right up the gut. And, uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, Brian Hatville just there was nothing sexy about that play. He just had a hole and he got to it, and it's another six for the Maroons. As uh, Brian Hatville goes 59 yards untouched around the left side and then right up the middle of the field, veering off to the left, and Perry will set up for two points. Padilla in the shotgun formation, pistol formation, three receivers to the near side, one to the far, and then Alva jumps, so Perry's going to get half the distance to the goal now, and they'll bring up another try. I'm out of breath tonight for, for some reason, partner. I feel like I'm running with my head cut off. It's 20 to nothing, Perry, just underway in the second quarter. And how many plays has Perry run? Uh, 13. 13 plays, and Perry's up 20 to nothing. Yeah. Padilla in the shotgun formation, pistol formation. He's going to give it. No, he's going to fake it and tries to get it to Braden Sweet over here on the right side, which would be the east side of the stadium. It falls incomplete. And the two-point try is no good. 20 to nothing. We'll take a timeout. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. You deserve quality health care. But at Stillwater Medical Center, we believe you also deserve an unmatched patient experience that's close to home. That's why our physicians, nurses, and staff are committed to providing compassionate, quality care. Right here in Stillwater. We're here to prove that the best patient experience is moments, not miles away. Learn more about our commitment to excellence at stillwatermedical.com. And welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. Just underway second quarter, and we just saw Brian Hatfield go untouched right up the middle on the left side of the line of, of the of the, uh, the offensive line for a 59-yard touchdown run. The two-point conversion was no good. 20 to nothing. Perry leads it just underway. Second quarter, 11:39 to go. And uh, 
This could get ugly yeah, really quick. Could. That's what we saw on film, those long runs coming right up the gut into the middle of the field and just people out running. Let's talk about the team speed, Alva, the lack thereof. It's it's evident right there. Garrett Byer back to kick from his own 40 now, kicking to the north. Uh, short kick down the center of the field, 25, 30, 35. Has a hole, 40, and he's going to be dragging Perry Maroon uh, tacklers to about the, we'll call it the 43-yard line. Actually, yeah, well, 43-yard line, so officially – not a really good punt. 10, 15, maybe it's a 17-yard punt. The kickoff, though, partner. Yeah, it was a good kickoff, but a good return there for Alva. So you doing all net? I'm doing net. Okay. Yeah. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Kickoffs, I don't know if they I, do I, I net. Was, On punts, they do. I don't know how they do I the return. Do net. Yeah. So. It's like Sandra Bullock. <laughs> the net. Boy, that was – you reached for that one. Of course That I was did. reaching right there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alva brings it to first and 10 from their own 43-yard line. Schlar under center, offset eye formation, one receiver to the far side. Gets a snap. He's going to pitch it over there on the right side to uh, Costello, trying to find some room to run. He just simply can't find anything, and he's going to be stacked up to the line of scrimmage. They gave him a yard. They gave him to the 44 partner. Wow. What? I don't know what okay. they saw, but it's going to be a yard gain. It's going to be second and nine for Alva. Uh, oh, man. Okay. That, he was tackled at least two yards back. Yeah, they, they gave him forward progress to the 44 and a half, actually. Good almost, grief. They almost gave him two yards. Yeah, look at that. There's That's no almost way. a two-yard run. There's he, no way. No. They did give him. That is basically two yards. <laughs> So we'll call it second and eight, Gee, and that's Christmas. what they're calling it on the scoreboard. They gave him two yards, yeah. second and eight for the goal bugs. Slar under center, two back set, offside, offset eye formation, back to gets a snap. He's going to give it to his uh, running back that's around Caldwell. the right side. Okay. That's Caldwell. Gets across midfield, falls forward to the 49, yeah. and that is a pickup of uh, five. That's We'll call it six yards on the play, so we'll bring up a third and two for the goal bugs. Yeah, it's just that kind of going back to what I saw on Fillmore. Turn, quarterback, turn around, pitch it, and turn around and lead the blocking. Which is a simple 24 he doesn't lead. trap pitch. Yeah, he doesn't really go block anybody. <laughs> hey, he's small. I think he's a little scared to get in there. Uh, so it's third and two. Slar under center, two back set. Same play. He's going to be run to Harzman and Perry right there to break God, it up. Fumbled. Ball's on the ground. Ball's on the ground at midfield. Who's got it? I think, I think Alva fell yeah. right back onto it. It was Costello. The give was to Harzman. And he fumbled the ball. Costello, Johnny on the spot, fell on it. That's a loss of two. And that's going to bring up a fourth and four for the goal bugs. Yeah, good but, good penetration by Bayer and Reyes, I believe, on that yeah. side. They uh, have, they go to the well to one too many times. They run the same play, and it's, you know. Right, and it's not exactly like it's working every time either. And they're going to go for it. Fourth and four. Watch that screen again. Slar under uh, in the shotgun formation. Back to pass, throw on the slant. It's batted down and incomplete, and Perry will take over. At midfield, first and ten for the Maroons. Alba, yeah. one of five on fourth down. What's the clock, partner? Clock is 925. Thank you. And that slant was there and for, uh, for Perry. Um, if Slark can get that pass over the defensive end, I think it was uh, – I don't know who was on that side, but whoever batted that ball down oh, from Blance, Perry, Blance, Blance Blance it, it, yeah. If he gets it over Blancet's hands, that would be a first down because it was there. So first and ten for Dawson Padilla, one back set. Shotgun formation, two receivers to the far side, one, two to the near. He gets a snap. He's going to hand it to Hatfield. Big hole again, 45-40, 35-30, 25, veers to the right, veers back to the center, 20, 15, 10, 5, oh touchdown, Brian Hatfield. That's a 50-yard touchdown run. And just a little dipsy do as he got up the field. He veered to the right, veered back to the center of the field, and veered back to the right, just kind of. Uh, you know, kind of a pinball effect. He's kind of it, screwing him into the ground. It, there, it was, see. and uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, you know, um, so 50-yard touchdown run, and it's 26 to nothing, Perry. And, boy, those gaps are huge tonight, and we thought they would be, partner. Yeah, and that's 509 yards on his last two carries for Hatfield. I told him not to break his fall with his bad finger. He doesn't need to right now. No, he hasn't been tackled <laughs> yet. Well, last two plays anyway. Padilla back in shotgun in the pistol formation to go for two two receivers to the far two to the near one back set. That's Hatfield. Surely he's not going to get the ball again. He's probably winded. He gets a snap. Padilla back to pass under pressure. Throws short to Joe Rupp over there. Incomplete. No good. So it's going to be 26 to nothing. We'll go ahead and take one more timeout. Get our timeouts taken care of. It's 26 to nothing. Your Perry Maroons on top. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. 
Does your bank send you a text when you have a low balance? SBMT does. You can receive a first alert text message on your cell phone, keeping you informed about your account activity, no matter where you are. As always, you are in control. Choose only the alerts you want to receive. When you need us, we're there 24-7. First Bank and Trust Company, Perry, Billings, Covington. Community-minded, just like you. Member FDIC. And welcome back to uh, welcome back to Alba, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw, twenty-six to nothing, Perry on top, and really hasn't done anything sexy. Uh, it's just been slant routes, uh, short pass routes, and then right up the middle, and it's just Alba just can't yeah. stop it. Yeah, uh, Buck and and Schwant and Randall Jones. Um, oh gosh, who's the other guard? Um, Sorry, um, got um, got shocked. Yeah, yeah. got shocked. The center just just, just two, last two runs have been huge holes. Could run a Mack truck through, and Hatfield's been doing it. And Garrett Byer back to kick off man. from his own forty once again. He's getting some duty. There's a a short kick taken wow. by the up man. Uh, boy, at the thirty three crosses the forty forty five and dump truck right down right there. So uh, really a ten a yard fifteen yard f- kick fifteen yard kick. Uh, got a score of interest in Class 3A. Uh, Blackwell is trailing Perkins 14 to nothing. Wow. I believe that's in the first quarter right now. So Blackwell has work to do now to, if they want to uh, attempt to get to the playoffs, they have to beat Perkins tonight. And it's 26 nothing here. Perry on top. Nine minutes to go, second quarter. And uh, it's it's just been. It's just been the same for Alva tonight. There's uh, two receivers, one in the near, one in the far. In the shotgun formation is Slar. He's going to get the snap back to pass. He throws a, a very loud lob uh, a screen pass to Costello, and somehow he gets up to the 49-yard line. But that ball was in the air a long time. That's a three-yard net. But that was not a pretty play <laughs> at all. No. Looks like they gave him five yards, partner. They gave him five. Oh, from the 45 to the 50. Sorry. I Man. thought it was from the 46 to the 49. But they gave him a generous five yards, brings up a second and five. But that play uh, – That was weird. That was a very weird play on the right side of the line of scrimmage. So second and five for the goal bugs. Slar under center now. Two back set. Gets a snap. He's going to give the pitch to Costello around the right side. And nice tackle, open field Braden. tackle by Braden Sweet over there to get no gain on the play. And it's going to bring up third and five. He came up nicely from his uh, wheel position and just read that really well with his eyes. Yeah, and taking down a much bigger you – know, Braden's only goes – about well, he's 5'10", 185. He's a pretty stout kid. Yeah, he's, he's Costello's, you know, 6'2", so taking down a bigger defender nonetheless. But like we said, Costello is kind of a lanky runner. He's not yeah. real quick. And, he's, uh, you know uh, – He's only about 180, too. Slarger so center, right. two-back set. He's going to give it to Harsman or up the middle. He gets the first down across the 45, falls forward to the 40. And that's going to be a 10-yard pickup and a first down for the Bucks. That's their fifth or their fourth of the game, and that's their second third down conversion. So they're two of five on third down tonight. Yeah, it's one of those. Uh, that's a simple 21, 31 trap, full 31 fullback trap right up the gut. And Harsman ran it pretty well. Nice open field tackle by Sweet. Alva first and ten from the Perry Marine 40-yard line. Under center, Schlar, two-back set, gets a snap. He's going to hand it to his first guy through and gets hammered right there down. Byer. Byer, nice to meet you. Have a seat to the gold bug at the 40. They gave him the 39. You've got to be kidding me. He was hit at the 40-yard line, partner. Yeah, they're giving him. They gave him a yard. Uh, I guess they're seeing the score and it thinking. Is, it's second and nine. Uh, <laughs> Garrett got him at the 41-yard line and punched him down hard. And if anything, it could have been a loss, but it's a gain. Second and nine for the Gold Bugs. Wow. Slar under center, two back set. Gets a snap. He's going to hand it to Harsman, and he's going to be stacked up and dropped in the backfield for a loss, and that better be a loss. I know. Yeah, gonna, about a yard. They're going to give him a one yard loss, and that was a host of Maroons on the play over there. And just uh, nothing going, so it's going to bring up officially a third and ten for the, for the Gold Bugs at the Maroons' 40 yard line. 6.31 to go before halftime. Perry on top, 26 to nothing. It's good penetration, you know, so partner by Gottschalk. He blew that play up immediately. He didn't make the tackle, but he was good. He blew up the play so the other defenders could come and wrap up on him. Third and 10 for Alva Schlar under center. Two back set on the offset eye formation. 
Gets a snap. He's going to run that pitch. Pass. Now it's going to pass. Uh, Costello's going to pass. He's got a receiver open. It's Meyer, and it went right through his hands and incomplete, and he was open, partner, at the 10. He got behind Joe Rupp, and Drake Dell was laid on the coverage on, on the over, the under, or the over from the safety position, and it just went right through his hands incomplete, and unfortunately for us. Yeah, and that's something we saw a little bit on film because yep. Costello is also a quarterback, so he can throw a little bit. And they did that a lot against Chisholm. If you watch the Chisholm film, he threw a lot. Uh, that's that's another Chisholm. thing. Part of why is he not the quarterback then? No, I have no, I have no <laughs> idea. So back to punt now for Alva. I think it's Caldwell. I believe that's who it was on the film. That's best He's I could back tell. Back to get it from his forty-eight. Gets the snap. Puts a boot yeah, into that's it. Caldwell. Drake Dell back to receive for Perry. He's going to let it go in touchback. the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. Perry will have the ball at their own twenty-yard line, first and ten. It's the clock burner. And it is 5.57 to go before we reach halftime. It's all your Perry Maroons, 26 to nothing. Where are we looking uh, offensively right now for the Maroons? What's the yardage? I mean, it's got to be up there. Yeah, 226, 114 through the air, 112 on the ground. And, partner, we've run 1, 2, Pretty balanced. 12, 14 plays. Pretty balanced. Yep, and held the ball only 4 minutes and 23 seconds. Now Padilla brings the troops up for their next series. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near, one back set. That's Hatfield. Padilla in the shotgun, in that pistol. Gets a snap. He's back to pass again. Good pickup by Hatfield. Got it. And Braden Sweet, 45, 50, 35, 40, 35, 30, 25. One man to beat. 15, right. 10, 5. Drags it. it into the end touchdown. zone. That's a touchdown, an 80-yard touchdown run. Braden Sweet right down the seam of the field, and it's 80 yards untouched basically until he got to the five. Had one man to beat, and he goes in, dragging tacklers. 80-yard touchdown run in a one-play 80-yard drive for Perry. Good grief. Braden Sweet was so wide open. And what made that play, Mike, is Brian Hatfield picked up the backside blitz uh, that uh, that Alva brought on the start. Right, yeah, and he gave, he gave Dawson time to get that to pass off. And that's Braden's third receiving touchdown tonight for the senior. What's the fourth touchdown drive of two plays or less? Carter? Wow. It is 32 to nothing. Perry on top there, setting up for a two-point conversion here. Padilla will go under center this time. Gets the snap. He's going to hand it to Brian Hatfield around the left side. Has nothing but open area and just walks in. It's 34 to nothing. Perry on top with 5.36 to go second quarter. And good grief. Uh, um, this is five weeks coming, partner. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh, I'm, I'm liking what I see. This, this Maroon team has a little swagger back now. And uh, it's it's a different ball club tonight. Granted, I know the opponent is is not the greatest, but we needed to see something like this tonight going into next week. Right. Yeah, the opponent is not the greatest, but I don't care. That's the last three plays they've gained. We didn't do this against Two hundred yards in three plays. Th we, this was supposed to be what we did with Newkirk. Yeah. And, and we now didn't do you know it. so, and we didn't do it so. Yeah, you got a fifty-nine yard touchdown, an eighty yard touch, a uh, fifty yard touchdown, and then an eighty. That's almost. That's 189 yards in three plays, partner. Yeah. I mean, that is – that's that's Oregon-esque. Well, 34 to nothing is Oregon-esque right now, and we're not even at halftime. No, so still five minutes to go in the second quarter. So uh, uh, Marcus Mariota, a.k.a. Dawson Padilla. Yeah, he's <laughs> 9 for 12 with uh, 194 yards and three touchdowns. Yep, for the Heisman tonight? Yeah, he is tonight. <laughs> I should have had him on my fantasy team. Garrett Byer back to kick from his own 40-yard line. Once again, he gets a kick. It's a right down the center of the field again, taking about the 25. Crosses the 30, veers back to the middle of the field, 35-40. Has a little bit of hole. Dump truck down about the 45. They gave him the 45-yard line, so another 15-yard kick. I thought he was nailed down at the 40. But well, One thing I'll say, they're getting a lot of chances, but their kick return team has done well tonight. So Alva will be set up shot first and 10 from their own 45-yard line. Perry leads this one 34 to nothing, 5.22 to go before halftime. <clears throat> I'm hearing our Perry coaches next door, and they're cracking me up on some of the calls they're making. <laughs> we're all over here on, together this year. Yeah, we're next to the, the Goldbugs uh, team as well. Slar comes out. He's under center, two back set, offset. Uh, two, two back offset eye. He's going to roll back to his left. He's going to fire across his body. It's, in, it's knocked down, uh, batted down, but it's uh, received by his, one lineman. of his offensive linemen <laughs> on the deflection at the 40. So officially a five-yard loss in the pass. He just, just batted it yeah, down to the ground. It down. Actually a four-yard loss on the pass to about the 44 and a half. Uh, actually, no, we'll call it the 41 and a half. Excuse me. So it'll be uh, second and 
we'll call it 14 for the Gold Bugs. Maybe, actually 15. Yeah, they're officially going to call it second and, second and 15, so a five-yard loss in the pass. One receiver will go out to the far side, two back set, Schlar under center. Gets a snap. He's going to hand it to Harsman up the middle, and he's going to be met in the backfield by Spencer Hartwig and dropped for a loss at the 40, or actually the, at the 39 yard line. That's going to be a one yard loss, and it's going to bring up a third and 16 for Alva. And you had just alluded to that, you know, Spencer's not big, but. He's hard to block. He's yeah. quick. That's, that's how you do it if you're undersized. That's, believe it or not, uh, what I had, how I had to play. I was about 218 playing nose guard, 6A football, so I had to use a lot of my quickness as well. So third and fifth, or we'll call it third and 16 for the Gold Bugs. One receiver goes to the far side. Got Slar in the shotgun. Got two back. Now he's going to come under center. Two back, uh, two backs uh, behind him. Gets snaps. Going to roll to his right. Looking, looking. Going to fire long down the uh, far sideline and not even close. As he had his receiver uh, turn around. Braden Sweet on the cover over the top, but he didn't really need to do much because that was a really bad pass. Incomplete. And it's fourth and 16 yeah, for the Bugs. Braden. Used what used the sideline as another defender there, and uh, Schlar, Schlar had nowhere to throw it and just overthrew the receiver about five yards out of bounds. So they'll be forced to punt. Colwell will be punting. He'll be standing at his own 27 yard line, punting to Drake Dell, who stands at his own 30. 3.30 to go before halftime. Perry on top, 34 to nothing. Snap back, and he gets the snap, puts a boot into it. A good kick oh right down goodness. the center of the field. Drake Dell going back. He and touched that. Drake touched that. No, he didn't. He didn't touch it. They're going to call. Uh, thank God. You need to get away from like call he call Peter. It. And he, he, if you're going to catch it, catch it. But uh, and that's what that it, that's good leadership right there by Joe Rupp. He came right up to Drake and said, "If you're going to catch it, catch it. But don't act yeah. like you're going to catch it." So, but it's it's uh, going to be a touchback. But we got a, a flag on the play. It's going to be holding on the Perry Maroons. Let's see what they do here. They're probably going to mark it. That was such a good kick. They'll probably mark it back, and they'll, it'll probably yeah, be Perry Ball at the 10. Good. I'm that guessing. Like a yard punt. That was a 60-yard punt, yes. Net, even with the average. <clears throat> that was a long one. So it's a holding call on Perry. They would have got the ball at the 20, and I think they're going to take the penalty from the 20 back to the 10. That's exactly what they're going to do. It's going to be first and 10 for Perry at the 10, their own 10-yard line. We have a 90-yard play in us. Oh, I think so. <laughs> yeah, we, dialed, we got that dialed up. So first and ten for Perry at their own ten-yard line. Got two receivers to the far side, two to the two to the near, one back set. That's Hatfield. He's going to be on the right side of Dawson Padilla. Now he's going to switch on me. He heard me. <laughs> Padilla in the shotgun formation gets a snap. He's going to hand it off to Brian Hatfield right up the middle of the field again. Twenty big hole again across the twenty falls forward to about the twenty-two yard line. That's a 12-yard pickup and a first down. They're just holes a plenty in that line of scrimmage right now in the middle. Yeah, it's starting to look like that um, Disney movie, the Shia LaBeouf <laughs> holes just <laughs> everywhere. You are really reaching tonight. Well, I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> keep the folks entertained. It's 34 nothing, partner. Oh, First and 10 for Perry. At the, they're on 22-yard line. Dawson Padilla in the shotgun formation, pistol formation. Gets a snap. Fires to Joe Rupp around down the right side of the line of scrimmage on the slant rod. Gets across the 30. Falls forward out of bounds. Close to the first down. Going to give him officially nine yards to the 31. So first and 10, or excuse me, second and one from the 31. Another good throw by Dawson. He's on tonight. He's really on yeah, tonight. Yeah, he, he, he's doing a really good job. Ten, ten completions. Now we got two receivers again to the far, two to the near for Perry. One back set, pistol formation, Dawson Padilla. Gets a snap, back to pass. He's going to fire short again, complete to Drake Dell, and he's going to be ushered out of bounds. He's got the first down, ushered out of bounds at the 43-yard line. That is a pickup of, uh, from the – where were we at? Oh, we I got it at 31, so that's – yeah, so to the 43 uh, – actually not the 43-yard line, to the 37. That's a pickup of six yards and the first down. For Perry, at their own 30, actually 38, so pick up a seven first down. Sorry, partner. It's all right. Four receivers, two to the near, two to the far, one back set. Shotgun formation. Padilla gets a snap. He's going to fire short to Joe Rupp. Has it, 40. Has a lot of room, 45, 50. 45 tries to split the defenders. Gets across the 40-yard line of 22, Alva. 22 yards. That's a 22-yard play and a first down. And, boy, Alva's just uh, – 
they're not. They need to get up on our, our receiver. I guess they have no faith in covering our receivers. Yeah, they're they, giving us the five yard cushion every time. That, that's their that's their lack of speed and, and physicality. Uh, you know, you bump and run on on a coverage, you better. And you're going to get beat or you're going to need safety help. And I don't I don't think they have faith in their corners to cover our guys one-on-one. Sweet and Rupp and Dale will just run right by them. And just as I said, that Alba takes a timeout so they can talk about things. But honestly, their, their adjustment to our speed, is it's it's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to lay down and die, partner, but it's 34 nothing. It's not going to get better. Yeah. I, would, I would get this game over with if I was the co- I would even talk about it at halftime. Hey, you want to have a running clock? Yeah, they may do that. I've no, uh, I haven't uh, – uh, I've Myself seen that. personally seen it, but I've heard people have done it in yes. the past. Yes, I've seen it done before. I've never seen it in 2A yet, but, uh, you know, Coach Dollar and Coach Bennett may come to an agreement at halftime, you know, running clock. Um, so we'll see what happens. But it's first and 10 for Perry at the Alva 40-yard line. They're up 34 to nothing, 202 to go before halftime. Timeout's over as we come back to action. Two receivers again to the near side, two to the far side for the Maroons. Pistol formation, Dawson Badia in the shotgun. There's the play, the whistle to play on. He gets a snap. He's going to hand it to Brian Hatfield. Right? No, he's going to fake it. He's going to fire to Joe Rupp uh, short, 35-30, and gets across the 30-yard line to the 29. 11-yard. 11 11-yard 11 pickup and a first down for Perry. He, he uh, Sorry about the call there. He confused me as Padilla took it out of the belly of Hatfield and then fired short down the right side of the line of scrimmage toward the Perry sideline to Joe Rupp and the first down, 11 yards. Yeah, I'm just – Ch- uh, chunks and chunks of yard yardage first every ten, play. First and ten from the Alva 29-yard line. Four receivers again. Brian Hatfield flanks Dawson Padilla to his left. He's in the shotgun. Gets the snap. He's going to hand it to Hatfield right up the center of the field. Uh, just wait, weaving his way through across the 25. And he's going to get a hit and dropped at the 22-yard line. That's a seven-yard gain. And that brings up a second and three for the Maroons. Yep. And that's that same uh, little, little uh, counter we've been running to Jones and uh, – and Perry's taking a timeout. And Buck's side, and it's been working every time. Yeah, Buck and the offensive line has been doing great tonight, just blowing Alva off the ball. They've done great all year, really. I, I mean, to, I don't mean to – I've been meaning to give them more props, so. Oh, they've been – I thought you were telling me we were going to a break. Yeah, they've been doing a really good job all year. And as a former offensive lineman, I just got to give them kudos. The big uglies don't get a lot of credit. That's usually the way you like it when you're an offensive lineman. You don't want a lot of credit, but – uh, I'm giving him credit. I mean, Colby had 870 yards before he got hurt. Hatfield yeah. had a 150-yard game. Mason had 70 yards last week. Right. And we've already got over 200 yards rushing tonight almost. So. Thanks for the drink break. That's what I needed. Okay, yeah. No but I, I told Mason, I said, Mike didn't know you had that gear in you last yeah. week. <laughs> what did he <laughs> say? He kind of laughed at me. Yeah. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, you got caught from behind. He's like, yeah, the guy had an angle. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, excuses, yeah, excuses. yeah, Mason. <clears throat> We're probably going to see him a little later on. I would, uh, I would expect Actually, it. as I say that, he's already in. There you go. Mason Taylor in at running back now. Two receivers to the far, two to the near in the pistol formation. Perry up 34 to nothing. And Mason And Mason he got moved. excited. <laughs> he, he got excited, and Coach Bennett's not real happy. He, he's not excited with Mason Taylor right now. And he moved. There's five yards back. It's going to bring up a second and eight now for the Maroons on the false start. <clears throat> So apparently the call was to him. Yeah, I would think so. He was ready to – he was excited moving up before he was allowed to. So two receivers to the near two, the far one back set. I told him he needs to get bigger next year. He's afraid of getting too big for track. And I said there's a difference from getting, between getting big and muscular. Right. That's what you need to get. You need to get muscular. So not that he isn't now, but he can get bigger. But he in the shotgun formation. Back to pass now. He's going to fire for Drake Dale down the far side. And it was right him. there on the fade route, right off his fingertips and incomplete. And Coach Bennett was looking at Drake and saying, boy, how come you didn't catch that one? Because it was right there, partner. It was a great pass. Yeah, it was a beautiful throw. He had to lay out a little bit. But, man, that should have been caught. Yeah, I agree. That's, I, don't, I don't know if he had alligator arms this time. But just uh, just went off the fingertips. Can't, can't, can't expect a better throw than that. Third and eight now upcoming for the Maroons. Perry is 0 of 1 on third down. They've only had one third down uh, tonight, but they made it up 1 and 1 for, on fourth down. So, <laughs> Well, this drive is an anomaly. It's seven plays now. I mean, we're not used to this. Two receivers, two to the near, two to the far. One back set. Third and eight gets a snap. He's back to pass under pressure a little bit. He fires short. It's off the fingertips of Joe Rupp and out of bounds, and it'll bring up fourth and eight for the Maroons, and definitely will be going for it. Yeah, that's inside the 30. You know, it's There's no reason to punt. 
too far for a field goal. All right, you go for it here. Minute 12 to go before halftime. Perry up 34 to nothing. And Perry will go for it fourth and eight from the Alba 22-yard line. Yeah, because a punt here, if you get in the end zone, you're netting, what, eight yards, yeah. seven yards. So, yeah, this is this is not the running – this isn't like running it up. This is just a smart play here. Yeah. Four receivers, two to the near, two to the far. If you don't get it, it's like a punt. Yeah, exactly. One back set. That's Taylor back in there. Padilla in the pistol formation. Gets a snap. He's back to pass. He's looking. He's going to fire that fade route again, firing for Drake Dell. And too it's far that time. Incomplete, and it was too far out in front of him. It's going to fall incomplete, and Perry will turn it over, over on downs. Alba will get the possession, first and 10 from their own 22-yard line. They went back to the well trying that play again, and, you know, you got to work on those things because you're going to have to use those kind of things next week against the Crusaders. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. So Alva takes over four, first and 10 from their own 22-yard line. Man, I'm not from Jersey. i got to – Figure out my tongue tonight. Foist and 10. Hmm. Easy there. Uh, Slar under center. Two back set on that offside. I formation. Takes a snap. He's going to pitch it over on the right side to Costello. Has a little bit of room. Got maybe a couple to the 30. Uh, they're going to give him to the 30 yard line. So pick up a three yards. Under a minute to go. Brings up second and seven for the Bugs. And I hear Alva's. Uh, Color commentary and their play-by-play next door to us. That's who that is. Yeah, next door. Yep. This would feel a little better. It wasn't a coach. <laughs> I hope they didn't use any of our pregame talk. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> Those guys from Perry over there. Slar under center, two back set once again. We have 25 seconds to go. He gets the snap. Back to pass again to Costello. They're trying to do it, and he's, he's going to fire. It's incomplete and batted down. By Liam Clawson in coverage over there. Young little Liam over there. That's his oh nickname, boy. and he was right in coverage. And Costello thought about passing it. Then he start, thought about running it, and then he got a little bit of room and threw it again. And almost uh, – Liam almost was almost pick, right there. Yeah, so. he was, he's been playing pretty well in, in uh, Colby's stead. You know, big big shoes to fill playing cornerback. That's a guy I expect next year to step up huge. I think he's, yeah, getting, gonna need I, he's him. getting some experience now. He's getting a little bit more confidence. The first year he was scared, but I think he's getting getting there. I think he's going to be a big guy to watch next year. Slaughter under center, two back set, and the reverse uh, uh, pitch or reverse handoff. That's to Harsman trying to find some room. Goes backwards, had a couple yards, then went backwards back to the 30, and they're going to give him one yard officially on the play. That's probably going to be the last play of the first half unless Perry took a timeout. I think they just did. They did. <laughs> oh, man. Perry took a timeout with 4.2 to go in, in the half. That's going to bring up a third and seven. Actually, they officially did not give him any yardage. So he had about three yards, and he went backwards, partner. Yeah, he's – yeah, but sometimes you, you can't do that. You're not Barry Sanders. Just get as many yards forward as you can. Don't try to make everybody miss and get something out of nothing. Good effort, but – Smart play would have been to just fall forward and you would have had some yardage. This is one game that it's exactly what we expected to happen this year. We were actually, we were actually right. The team has come out and played. They're focused. They're fired up. They're ready to go. They're showing a lot of heart going into next week. I think, I think honestly, they were just beat up the last five weeks, partner. I really yeah, do. They had a lot and, of injuries. And, and, and yeah. injuries, exactly. And playing without Coley for the first time against the best team in the district, in my opinion, Hennessy, that's – that's tough sled no matter how you slice it. We haven't called Austin's aim yet. Uh, he's on defense tonight, so they're, they're using him sparingly. Uh, Austin yeah. Reyes is back, but he, you know, they're kind of trying to save him. And He gave me a big hug. I said, welcome back. He gave me a big hug. He was really happy to be back in uniform. <laughs> so uh, Back to punt is Colwell. He's back at his 18-yard line. Is that and 42 seconds on the clock or 4.2? It's 4.2. I'm not sure why Coach called a timeout then. <laughs> they want to see if we can get maybe honest. a return here. Snap back, and Caldwell gets it. Tried to get a, a rush on. It's a short punt. Yeah, he yeah, he, he shanked one. it. It's going to hit. take an Alva bounce at the 45. Now taking a Perry bounce. Now back to an Alva bounce. That was kind of weird. Finally downed at the 47-yard line. But that's the end of the first half, and Perry is all over the goal bugs. 34 to nothing. Come back. We'll have the first half stats, and we'll take a break. We're listening to Perry Marine Football on Triple Play Sports. This is Ray McCraney, system manager for Sudden Link, inviting you to score bid with safety. We've got our best lineup ever, HDTV with the fastest internet in town and three Sudden Link to go. Experience every second of the action in crystal clear HD and stream your favorite shows like a pro. Your download speeds up to 8 minutes. Switching the bundle and save with the Sudden Link team is easy. One company, one connection, one deal. 
come visit us at 617 Delaware in Perry or 78.com. Campbell Communications is proud to sponsor and to bring you Perry Maroon Athletics. To become a sponsor, please visit www.campbellcommunicationsok.com or call and ask for Brock at 405-204-4246. Campbell Communications, where we bring the game to you. And welcome back to, uh, I almost said Perry, welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma, Brock Campbell alongside Mike Saw as Perry is on top at halftime, 34 to nothing over the Gold Bugs, and really, really has not been much of a contest, and, and Perry has just enforced their will on the Gold Bugs tonight uh, so far as uh, just everything has gone right. Let's look at the first half stats, Mike. Let's go ahead and tell uh, the team stats and we'll go over some individual stats for you. Okay. Uh, we're the visiting team tonight, so I mentioned us first. 374 total offensive yards for Perry. Wow. Two, yeah. I know I had to take a breath. <laughs> There's so many. 243 through the air, three passing touchdowns. 131 on the ground. Uh, Hatfield has the two long rushing touchdowns. No turnovers, which is good. That's a key. No turnovers. Four only four penalties for 30 yards. And uh, let's see, only seven minutes of possession, partner, in a 24-minute half. You know that's that's insane. You know we had, you know, like I said, four play, four drives of two plays or less, and in those four touchdown drives, I think we about a minute 17 of possession. So you know we had that one long possession. But anyway, Alva, 55 total yards, eight through the air, 47 on the ground. I got that. Interception and really their only long run is the uh, a ground rush. 17. They had that 18 yarder. No penalties. Uh, 17 yards. 17 minutes possession. Let's see individually. Hatfield's got six carries for 131 yards, two touchdowns. He's the only one who's carried it so far. Haven't needed to run much on in the air. Padilla best game of the year by far. 13 19, 243, three touchdowns. Sweet's got five for 157 plus that 80 yard touchdown. Dale's got two for two, 22 yards, Rupp five for 57, and Skovanek had that one uh, touch, one catch for seven yards. And So if that's the individual and team stats for the first half. It's just been, to you. It's just been kind of one-sided, and, <clears throat> you know, Perry leads at 34 to nothing in halftime here. And that's a look at the halftime stats brought to you by Suddenlink. Uh, Suddenlink, uh, uh, make sure you give them a call, and they'll get you hooked up with the Internet and cable and, and phone and everything you want. So Suddenlink, uh, give them a call, and we're happy to have them as our halftime sponsor. Also wanted to let you know uh, we are still looking for a couple sponsors here as we get into basketball and wrestling. Um, if you'd like to sponsor or, have a, or know a business that would like to sponsor for those events uh, and then going forward maybe for the next year the whole year, Go to CampbellCommunicationsOK.com, click on the contact page, and all my contact information is there. My number is 405-204-4246, or you can email CampbellCommunicationsOK at gmail.com. So we'll be relocating to Perry temporarily in a couple weeks, and then hopefully to Stillwater later on down the road. Uh, so we're, uh, I'm looking forward to doing that and getting closer to Perry Athletics and where I can do a lot more for you and bring you more uh, events on YouTube as well. So uh, we're going to have nine basketball games this year on uh, the radio, and um, we're going to have six wrestling events uh, for regular season. And then, of course, when we do wrestling postseason, there will be five wrestling postseason. If it does not conflict with, with – uh, if basketball does not conflict with wrestling in the postseason, we will cover the basketball postseason as well. But right now it does conflict regionals and wrestling and, and state are the same weekends as basketball right now. So um, – Anyways, we're going to bring you a lot more coverage this year. Mike's going to get a education in wrestling, and he's going to get thrown to the fire as we might uh, put him in for the girls' basketball play-by-play. -play. Yeah, that'll be interesting. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, but if you want to sponsor, I'm looking for maybe two more sponsors uh, for wrestling and basketball. I would really like uh, some information on, on any businesses that are interested in doing that so I can send you pricing and all that good stuff. So, anyways, we're going to take our first time out of the break. Uh, you're listening to the Suddenly Halftime Scoreboard in Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. This is Ray McCraney, System Manager for Suddenly, inviting you to score big with faith. 
We've got our best lineup ever, HDTV with the fastest internet in town and free submarines to go. Experience every second of the action in crystal clear HD and stream your favorite shows like a pro with download speeds up to 8 minutes. Switching to bundle and save with the Sunlink team is easy. One company, one connection, one deal. Come visit us at 617 Delaware and Perry or Sunlink.com. A medical team that cares about your health and your community. Doctors Wooler, Jameson, Stubbs, and Payton contribute to athletic and philanthropic efforts in Stillwater and surrounding areas like Guthrie, Perry, Perkins, Cushing, and Blackwell. While we are bone and joint experts, we are also parents, friends, and neighbors. Enjoy our quality orthopedic treatment, MRI, and on-site physical therapy services as we support this community. Click outreach at orthook.com. Remember, Ortho Oklahoma, we are keeping you together. Whether it's a car accident, storm damage, or a fire, when the unthinkable happens, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. In this moment, it doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance you do. In this moment, what matters is knowing that you are covered. Get peace of mind. Get Steve Womack at the Womack Agency. You can visit with Steve at 623 Delaware Street, or you can call him at 580-336-6300. Or he invites you to visit his website at www.farmersagent.com backslash. The world needs a lot of energy to run, so we care about where and how it's produced. At Denon Energy, we're not just providing energy, but responsible ways to supply it. That's why we're proud supporters of the areas where we live and work, because just as important as what the world needs today is what it needs for tomorrow. Devon Energy. Commitment runs deep. <laughs> And welcome back to Perry, Oklahoma. I did it. I knew I was going to do it. Welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma, in Woods County here. Halftime, Perry leads at 34 to nothing. If you hear a little buzz in the background, we got the air conditioner on. So we got a yeah, little hot. So uh, It's not hot outside, but it's hot in the they, booth. They provide us an air conditioner and a heater. So that's the nice thing about these uh, this press box in Alva. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, halftime scoreboard show brought to you by Sudden Link. Uh, in the at halftime, it looks like, Blackwell just made a 34-yard field goal, but they trailed 28 to 6 at halftime. Uh, to Perkins, uh, let's see here. I got Hennessy up ch up on Chisholm, fourteen nothing. I got yeah, I just saw that too. First quarter. Uh, let's see here. Stillwater was leading I uh, Ike seven six in the first. Mount St Mary and Blanchard. That was supposed to be a good game tonight. It it is. It's fourteen to seven. Blanchard. The Lions on top at halftime. Two uh, a four championship. Davis twenty one. Kingston zero at the end of the first. No surprise there. Um, let's see here. East Central 16, Collinsville 13. Just go ahead and we can trade off. I got Keeper 21-0 second quarter over Drum, right? No surprise there. Empire, a 7-6 lead on Rush Springs right now. Santa Fe, Edmund Santa Fe 35, Norman 6 in the second quarter. Class B, Wilitka 30, Haley Haleyville 6 with 149 to go in the first. It's a, I believe Class B, Alex 24-6 over Geary in the first quarter. I'm sure Alex Thurn, uh, Thurnberg, Thornburg has a couple touchdowns already early. He's a heck of a player. Uh, Halftime here from Ranger Field. Perry explodes for 20 points in the second, and that's pretty much what happened. It's 34 to nothing, Perry. Bethany on top, 14 to nothing, or, or excuse me, 14 to 14 on John uh, John Marshall tied at halftime. This is interesting for me. I mean. For us, Anadarko's only up seven to nothing on Weatherford at the half. I gotta believe maybe they're resting. Some they're guys, resting their players. But they've also got like a yeah. <laughs> thirty game win streak yeah. going. You don't want to lose that. Uh, I wouldn't. Let's see here. Let's see if I got um, Garber twenty four Welts zero first quarter. So the Wolverines doing very Man. nicely tonight. Locust Grove just continues to score. It's already fifty to nothing over Jay three A. Boy, Jay used to be good. Yeah, 3A, Locust Grove, I don't know where they came. They came out of nowhere. They've been really good the last few years. Jay challenged for that district every year, it seems like. And uh, uh, let's see here if I've got some um, other scores here. Um, Seminole up 22-8 over Paul's Valley. Seminole, another really good 3A team. Morrison leads Hominy 6 to nothing in the second quarter. That's a, That was going to be a good game. Jinx leads UConn 24 to nothing at half. No surprise there. Um, see Thomas. Here's a Thomas score: twenty to nothing over Fairview. That was for the district tonight. Second quarter. So twenty to nothing over Fairview in the second quarter, right up the road here. Garber now thirty-two. Welch zero. Deer Creek and Guthrie tied at seven at halftime. Wow. 
That's sure, for the district title. Battle, That's at yeah. Deer Creek. Defensive battle there. Uh, let's see here. Um, see if there's anything else that we need to go over. We've got five minutes and change. We still uh, got a little Westmore time. Westmore beating Putnam City, 20 to nothing. I'm from the Putnam City area, so it's not my alma mater. That's the Pirates. <laughs> I'm sure, my alma mater is losing too. Let's see if I can get some updates here. Uh, struggling this year. Okay, we said the Deer Creek Guthrie game. Um, to, to, to McAllister um, on top, 42 to seven over Memorial. That's Tulsa Memorial, I, I believe. Who was it? I think it's Tulsa Memorial. Isn't that? Well, yeah, that's five they? A. Uh, McAllister, the Buffs. Oh yeah, yeah, they're number one in five mm -hmm. A, I believe. Mm -hmm. This is a NHL score, Matt. I'm a big hockey fan. Uh, my Blackhawks have one nothing. Thunder play tonight. The Thunder are playing. I don't. I think they play Memphis, don't they? I can't find the score. I've seen comments by Mr. Doug Gottlieb on how they're playing. and I just They haven't been good comments, so I don't think they're playing well. I just hope we don't get so far behind when Durant and, and, uh, and Russell come back. Cause tough to, yeah, because the West is so hard to West make up. West is hard. They're, they're next to last right now in the West right now, in, yeah. in the entire West. So uh, Durant's supposed to come back early December, correct? I don't, I don't think he's coming back till after Christmas. I think oh, Westbrook's that's not early, good. I think Westbrook's early December. Well, maybe that'll solidify a little bit here. I hope so. We need more as much scoring as we can get. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. But uh, we've got uh, any more scores? Uh, Let's see if I can find a thunder score. Da, 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 da. We're kind of winging it here. Steer, still seven. Oh, yeah, it was half. Did you Ringling. say Steer Creek? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they got a lot of steers there. Um <laughs> Ringling is beating uh, the hometown of Rue McClanahan, Helton, 24 to 20, 24 to 3 at the half. Oh, well, Memphis only up by nine. 49 40 at halftime. Bulls, I like it. Um, let's see if there's any. Is, uh, there's some college games on, going on tonight. Let's see if I can find some. Oh yeah, college see, football um, tonight. Uh, the uh, Utah State Wyoming game. I got interest in that. Let's see here. Do, 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 yeah, all go all that. FBS. Uh, we're winging it here. We'll give you Memphis and Temple tied at ten. Crud. Uh, Utah State, State. Wyoming. Utah State leads seventeen to three. Can you click so. on the score. So I Why do you, see. What do you have interest in? Who's who's fantasy playing? Fantasy football. You're, you have fantasy college football. Uh huh. Really? Yeah. Here. For money too. Any, that's interesting. I've never heard of fantasy college football. There you go. Hey, uh, if you if you missed the uh, opening with uh, the pregame, and you've always wondered what a gold bug is, well, I'm going to tell you what it is. I got this from Mark's Distinctive. It's M-A-R-C, Distinctive uh, High School Mascots. And these are mascots that people are questioning, you know, like, what they are. I'm, I bet Perry's on there because people don't know what a maroon is, really. I mean, it could be a warrior. It could be an all-American athlete. So it might be on there, too. I'll have to check that. But according to what this says on here and according to how he's researched this, the name was inspired by the school's principal in the 1920s, Goldbug. He was a great admirer of Edgar Allan Poe and especially liked Poe's The Goldbug book. He conceived the idea of awarding paper gold bugs to outstanding and talented students, so the name was soon applied to Alva's teams. So it's a made up it's a made up mascot. Yeah. It's not a gold bug, it's not indigenous to this area, it's just a made up it's an award. Yeah. It's a made up award, uh, according to Edgar Allan Poe's The Gold Bug. Yeah, that's so. how a lot of sports teams get named is by Sports writers or sports mm -hmm. information directors at the school at the time, you know, they name and, uh, and nicknames. And Alabama's an interesting one because they're called the Crimson Tide. But, you know, they were red, obviously. And the reason they're called the Crimson Tide is because during a game versus Auburn back in, like, 1920-something, mm -hmm. they said, uh, Alabama rolling down the field like a Crimson Tide. And so that name stuck, and that's the mascot. Why it's an elephant, that is only anyone's was guess. Was that your best Keith Jackson impression? That was pretty University good. University of Alabama. That's, <laughs> uh, that's about, about as good as I can do. <laughs> On that note, we're going to take a, our last time out of the halftime. We'll come back. We'll get the keys to the second half and get you underway for the third quarter. Your Perry Maroons lead it 34 to nothing at halftime over the Alva Gold Bugs. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. Bank anytime, anywhere, without having to carry your laptop along. First Bank is proud to bring you mobile banking. It gives you full access to your account safely and securely from your mobile phone. Mobile banking adds a new level of convenience to managing your account. You can bank on the go no matter where you are. View your accounts, make transfers, pay bills, and even receive text alerts, all from the ease of your cell phone. When you need us, we're there 24-7. First Bank and Trust Company, community-minded just like you. Member FDIC. 
just like the Perry Maroons football team practices hard and plays even harder, Vance Chevrolet GMC Buick of Perry works 24-7 to provide customers with the very best selection and service. Right now, we're offering a special oil change, filter, and tire rotation for $29.95 and only $69.95 for a diesel oil and filter change. Yes, Vance Chevrolet Buick GMC of Perry, family-owned and operated for 19 years, where it's comfortable to buy a car. And welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. We're at halftime. 34 to nothing is the score. Your Perry Maroons on top over the Gold Bugs. As we have under a minute to go, they're probably going to give a couple more minutes before they get this and kicked off so the teams can uh, stretch and get ready. Um, so, Mike, uh, you're up 34 to nothing. Coach Cameron Bennett, you're in the locker room. Keys to the second half. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, there's really nothing to say. Uh they haven't had. I mean, well, okay, four penalties cut down on the miscue on the on the on the uh, mental mistakes because you have three uh, offside slash uh, false starts. Uh, you're holding on to the belt ball well. You're throwing well. The line's blocking well. You're tackling well. You've had one big play of 18 yards, and I'm putting big in air quotes. Just you know, go out and keep playing the way you're playing. Don't don't get lackadaisical and uh, keep everybody healthy and. You second teamers, you get ready to get in there because we're gonna we're gonna take a look at you. On the flip side, if you're Bruce Dollar, what are you telling your team after an 0 and 9 year, 0 and 5, and you just keep seeing the same result? What are you telling your kids? Well, it depends on how he's how he's dealt with it in the past during the year, because at this point, 0 and 9, do you really go in there and rip him a new one? That's and you know I, I think it's a nurture right now. This is what he's gonna be doing. Nurture, uh, just nurture these kids. They're all young. You know, there's only a couple seniors that even get any playing time, and they're mm-hmm. linemen. <clears throat> you know, you just tell them, you just you try to get behind them as best you can. You know, I believe in you. You know, you know but you know, we're playing hard, and that's what you can you can look look at and say, yeah, we're playing hard like the way we're playing. We're just we're going up against a good team tonight. You know, all the pretty much the platitudes I think is what coach is going to be. We talked about this last week with Chisholm. They left their starters in the whole third quarter. How long do you think Coach Bennett's going to leave our starters in in that third quarter tonight? If, if we score right away on the first drive, I think we'll give them that drive and the next drive. But if we don't, you know, maybe three possessions. Because we are still working toward the playoffs. So, yeah. And we've got some injured players back, so we got to get them in the mix and get and them you want to get their legs under them. And, right. and you want to get – you know, you want to run some stuff that you're going to run – Next week, actually, you might want to go vanilla just in case there's a scout here. I don't know how advanced scouting works at, at this level, at high school level. Oh, they have scouts. They so do, you, you they might, do have scouts. There's probably an Oklahoma Christian Academy scout here. You might want to go uh, vanilla. You might want to go Oklahoma State offense. What? The way Can't it's score? been this year. Yeah, <laughs> vanilla <laughs> to the extreme, <laughs> even when you're down I'm glad we got a week points. off. Yeah, you don't no have kidding. to watch that debacle. Yeah, next week's going to be like a and, and like me, 23 and, and, 20 and, and, next week. Me and you are orange to the bone, but man, yeah. we just it's tough to. Well, we've, we've won nine games every eight or yeah. nine games every year since two thousand and eight. Yeah, this is not. We're not going to get that many this year. We all know that. Yeah. We'll be lucky to get six. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't even know if we can beat Texas. At the uh, beginning of the year, I had them as a win. I also had West Virginia and TCU as a win, but you know, you know forgive me for TCU having Trent uh, and West Virginia Clint Trickett and Boykin complete one eighty with yes, their quarterback. They have. They I mean, have. that's the reason. And there you go, quarterback play. They have had good quarterback play. They're good. We haven't. We're bad. Well, here's the difference with Boykin this year. You, you mentioned him. He doesn't have to do dual threat this year. No. He's got uh, a good running back. He's got Catalan, uh, Catalan and, Brown, and Brown, yeah. Brown to help through that. They were hurt last year. Yeah, they were. Plus, he's got Doxson to throw to. and has got Parmley that one. Not Parmley, but that really good. Lizenby. Lizenby, just, yes. Guys, just go get it. I'm yeah. going to throw it to you and go get it. And Talk about the OU game tomorrow. What's your prediction? Baylor, uh, OU at 11 o'clock. You Another 11 me? o'clock start, I know. Baylor – they're good, but they came into our our place last year not as Dropped good as egg. us. Would kick, you know, we kicked yeah. their butt. Yeah. I need to see them win big on the road against yeah. big opponents. They can beat the Kansases of the world. Oh, you while they have two losses, they've lost by what five to ten points. Yes, maybe. They're still a good team, and I think they're going to control the run OU. game. Yeah, I think uh, OU's going to control the run game. Trevor Knight has been playing really well. 
He's and, getting a feel for that offense. They're letting yeah. him run more. Right, and that's Heupel the key. is giving him more autonomy yeah. to call some checks. And, when and he that's what's happening. Throw. Yeah, when he doesn't have to throw is when he's And I hate best. to say it, the bell dozer is really good over the middle. You oh, know, he's on those a much passers better. He's because just a good he's, athlete. He's, he's yeah. tall. He's a much better tight end than so, I thought he was um, going to be. But, you know, oh, he's going to win tomorrow. Um, Tulsa plays SMU. <laughs> That, I picked. That's Tal- a I picked point Tulsa. Flip. Yeah. I picked Tulsa. SMU is so bad. If they cannot beat SMU, good golly almighty! I mean, it's yeah, just it's sweet sassy molasses. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. With that, we're getting ready to start the second half, and Perry's going to have the ball to start the third quarter. Uh, Alva will be kicking to the south, and Perry will be going from the south to the north. So, left to right on your radio dial. Also, Cowboy basketball starts tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow yeah, night, a, uh, an exhibition. exhibition, and the Cowgirls have already won their first one, 91 to 53, over I think Southwestern Oklahoma State. I think, I think that's who it was. So soon. Uh, Cowgirls are in top 25 this year. Yeah, Cowboys are not, but I don't, I don't know how the Cowboys are going to. I don't know. There's a lot of unknowns right now. You know, we yeah. talked about co- uh, basketball last year, and you know, we were frustrated with that too. So, and who we knows know our gonna baseball happen. team's going to be good. We know that. Yes. There's the kick. It's a short kick. It's going to be taken at the 25 by Joe Rupp. Third, excuse, yeah, 30, 35, has a hole. 40, 45, 50, has blockers. 45, bears out to the left. 40, 35, and he's going to be dump truck down, hit down across the 30, and he's going to get it all the way up to the 29 yard. Actually, going to mark him down a 30 yard or 30 yard line at, of Alva. So he took that from the 25 to the 30. That's a 25, uh, 30, 35, 40, 45 yard kickoff return for Joe Rupp. That's probably our longest return of the year. And he had blockers out there. Yeah, I thought he was going to go. I did, too. I really did. So it's going to be first and ten for Perry, and the, and the, the horror film keeps getting worse for Alva. As Perry has it first and ten from the Alva 30-yard line. Two receivers at the far, two the near, one back set, pistol formation. Dawson Padilla gets the snap. He's going to hand it to Brian Hapfield on the pitch around the right side, trying to find some running room. Makes one miss. Got a flag, and it looks like we might have an illegal block or a hold over here on the side by Drake Dell, I think. Let's see. What they give, the line judge threw that, and it's going to be holding. It's going to be holding on Perry over here on the right side line, the Perry side line, so negate that play. It didn't go anywhere anyway. Yeah. But good pursuit there by the Gold Bugs. Right. As they, they 53, I don't have a 50. Oh, that's Burton. Is that Burton? Yeah, that's Terrell bad. Burton that uh, strung that play out nicely. And they're going to take the penalty, of course, from the 32. So officially, that's going to be a seven-yard penalty from the 30 to the 42. Man, that was one of the keys I talked about. Actually, from the 30 to the 37, seven-yard penalty. Sorry. <laughs> so first and 17, Das Badia with the fade rot, looking over there for Braden Sweet. Has him. It's caught. No, it's a, he's dropped it and uh, in coverage over there. It's separating the ball from Braden uh, nicely. And good sportsmanship. He helped Braden up. Um, I can't tell what number that is over there. I'll get that for you. Get the Binox. Oh, crud, he's moving. Actually, that wasn't Braden. That was uh, Scooby over there on the fade. 21, that's Colwell. That's Colwell, and he was in coverage on Scoovinuck over there on the far sideline, on the left side of the line of scrimmage, and it followed incomplete. So it brings up a third and 18 for the Maroons. Two receivers on the far side, one to the, two to the near, one back set. That's Hatfield. Pistol or shotgun formation. He gets a snap. He's going to hand it to Hatfield around the left side. Had a little hole. Gets across the 35. Falls forward to maybe the 32-yard line. And if so, that's a pickup of five yards. So it's going to bring up a third and 13 for the Maroons. Yeah, trying to go back to the well, but to the other side. Mm-hmm. Uh, simple. It was a counter. It's a simple, simple counter. counter, yeah. It's been working. Do it nice adjustment stop. there by the Gold Bugs in halftime, though. Yeah, they come out and... You know, we get the level we gave him the penalty, but yeah, it was a nice play. We wrapped up well on that. Now the Marines are going to have trips to the right side of the line of scrimmage, one to the near or one to the far. That's Skuvenek, one back set, shotgun formation. Padilla is going to roll to his left. He fires and he's got Drake Dell. He catches it. it. You know. uh, we'll call it uh, a catch to about the 27-yard line. That's going to be a five-yard pickup. It's going to bring up a fourth and eight for the Maroons. I'm seeing the 3-4 they're talking about. I, I'm guessing that Pawnee game was a, was a look, uh, was a, you know, what they wanted to do at mm-hmm. Pawnee because I'm seeing a lot of 3-4 now in the second in this whole game. It was a pickup of six, bucks. so actually a fourth and seven upcoming. Back to passes, Badia, 
And he's under pressure. He's going to fire down the uh, down the right side. It's complete to Drake down oh, the goal wow. line and touchdown Perry. That is a 27-yard touchdown strike, and Perry's on the board again, 40 to nothing. As it looked like that play was going to be just a, a, a bad play, a broken play, but Dawson Padilla made chicken salad out of you know what and f fired down to Drake Dell over there on the right side, and he caught it at the two and just walked in for a 27-yard touchdown pass, and that's the fourth touchdown for Dawson tonight. Yeah, that was a nice throw. Great comeback and effort Nine, nine by Dale. eighteen there, partner. Nine eighteen, nice. Thank you. Setting up for two point conversion. Got trips to the right, one to the far side. Now same formation. He's going to roll to his right. Fires into the end zone. This Drake Dell. He's caught it, and it's good. It's forty two to nothing on the two point conversion, and Perry leads at forty two to nothing. We're going to take a timeout. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. Integrity, respect, professionalism, and a genuine caring attitude is exactly what you can expect from us at Brown Dugger Funeral Home. We are committed to being available to you every step of the way. We know that losing a loved one is never easy, but it's our privilege, responsibility, and our calling to help ease this process as much as possible. We are avid supporters of the Paramaroons and welcome you to come or stop by. We're located at 1010 North 7th or call us at 580-336-4444. Brown Duggar Funeral Home. We are here for you. And welcome back to Alba, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. And when it's going good, it's going good. That play was looked like it was dead to rights. So Alba had it pretty well defended. But Dawson Padilla found Drake Dell down the right sideline, the Perry sideline on our side, wide open at the two-yard line. He walked in from the two. That's a 27-yard touchdown pass from Dawson Padilla to Drake Dell. Two-point conversion was good on the pass to Drake Dell. So it's 42 to nothing, Perry on top, as we are just underway, 9-18 to go third quarter. We have a new kickoff person. That's Jansen Hartwig. He might take off take the duties over next year as he'll be kicking from his 40. Gets a boot into it. It's a high short kick, taking about the 28-yard line, crosses the 30, 35, and knocked down hard right there about the 36-yard line. So that kick was 5, 10, 15, 20. So we'll call it a 24-yard kick for Jansen. Jansen Hartwig. Oh, my microphone is hidden. There we go. I don't know why. <laughs> Got to be able to speak into that mic. Yep, yep. <laughs> so Alva will have it first and 10 from their own 36-yard line, trailing 42 to nothing to the Perry Maroons. And the starters are still out there for de for the defense, and I totally agree with that. You know, you just need to get them more reps and, and get them prepared for next week as we will be taking on the Christian Heritage Crusaders in Dell City. Yeah, it's, there's still nine minutes to go in the third. You have to I – mean, you can't – I mean, I guess you could, but numbers-wise, you got to leave the starters out there. You just don't have a lot of depth at 2 Now confusion for Alva now. they got two backs now. Uh, Slar goes under center, takes a snap. He's going to pitch it to Costello. He's going to look for the pass. Passes down the seam. He has one open, and it's good coverage – but he caught – did he catch – no, he didn't catch no, the ball, but good it. coverage as Drake Dell reached back and got in his face, kind of distracted him because that was going to be complete right down the seam, partner. Yeah, that's that play's been there that's a been couple there. times. Yeah. It just like, still hasn't made great throws. And that's one thing that maybe might concern you for going forward next week because Christian Heritage passes the ball about 90% yeah. well, of the time. Well, if Colby so. can't play, yeah, I mean, Clawson yeah. will probably get worked on a little bit. You would think. So second and ten, one receiver to the far side, two back set, and the offside, offset eye pitch goes to Harsman around the right side, and he's going to get up maybe to the 38-yard line, actually to the 37-yard line. They're going to give him officially uh, to the 38. They're going to be officially a two-yard pickup on the play, and that was to Harsman around the right side on that pitch. I think Spencer Hartwig was in on the tackle there as I Thank heard the you. PA. Thank you. 7-17 to go third quarter, 42 to nothing, Perry. That was an officially a one-yard run, so it brings up a third and nine upcoming. Slar gets the pitch to uh, Costello. Costello around the right side, and still nothing doing as Perry jumbles that up, and they actually gave him to the 39. I don't see how they gave him the 39. They gave him three yards. <laughs> it's going to bring up a third or fourth and seven. Boy, they're, they're being very generous tonight. They really are. Let's see, who's that, 70... That's a different person in on the 
Go for Perry. Yeah. 70 what? Does that look like 8 maybe? 78 is Golden? Justin Golden. Man, already? Good job. Back to punt for uh, Alva is the uh, is Caldwell. God, he's Stands a Stands about his 28. Drake Dell way back to return the kick. There's a good kick. Uh, punt. He's going to come up and field it about the 22, 25, 30, 35, and he's gonna, there's going to be an illegal block in the back over there. I think that's going to be on Austin Reyes. Yeah. As uh, the back judge saw him do that and said, uh-uh, you can't do that. So Perry's going to start back in their own territory once again to start the drive. And officially, Drake will get to – we'll give him about a 13-yard – yeah, a 13-yard return from the 22 to the 35 officially. I liked how he came up on that punt and didn't let it bounce and, and, and got what he could on the on – the, um, the kickoff or the punt return. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Much time is left on the par clock, partner. Six nineteen to go in the third quarter. Coach Bennett having a little conversation with the line judge. And don't know what that would be about, but not real happy with something. Maybe the spots of the calls. Where are we on at the twenty one seventy nine? So Perry comes out. It's going to be Dawson Padilla under center. Two receivers, one to the near, one to the far. Now I formation, two back set, gets the snaps, going to hand it to Brian Hatfield right up the center of the field. 25-30, has a hole, 35-40, and gets across 45-50, still going, 45. Judge back to the, the center of the field, 40-35, uh, and he's dump truck down about the 34-yard line. That's a pickup from the 21 to the 34-yard line and a big first down once again for the Maroons. 45 yards. That's the only that's only the fifth first down tonight for Perry. Wow. <laughs> if that tells you anything How with this uh, actually wait. Up. Nope. That's that's, that's not the right one. I think that's their eighth. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. on Alva. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is their eighth, yes, correct. So first down and ten for Perry at the Alva forty or out of thirty five yard lead. Dawson Padilla rolling to his left, fires down the field. It's no, it's incomplete. We've got a flag in the backfield and that's gonna be holding on the maroons. Yep. Be holding in the backfield from the spot of the foul. And it's going to be bring up about a second and 20, or excuse me, a first and 20 for Perry. Well, that's something I talked about at the half. Uh, that's, now that's three penalties already in the second half. That's not Perry doing a little under center stuff now, trying to give some different looks. Get ready for next week. And it's like Mason's back in at running back. It is a holding, and the ball will be placed back at still going. Still going. At the 49-yard line of Perry. So a 14-yard hold, 14, really? Well, from, probably from the spot of the foul. Oh, yeah, he was in the back. He was in the backfield, so it was in the backfield. I'm back just field, used so to it being 10 yards. A 14-yard penalty, and it, it, it ends up being from the spot of the foul. I, I, I believe spot of the foul is only when it's past the line of scrimmage. I don't think you do spot of the foul behind the line of scrimmage. Never I have seen that. It's usually just 10 yards. Well, it's, but first, hey, it's first and 26 regardless. I digress. Two receivers and then a hard count, and I think uh, Alvin might have been drawn off. I think he, I don't know who Bennett's yelling at there. <laughs> he's yelling know, that either. direction. He's yelling at the Alva player that kept going when the whistle was blown, I think, because 55 is about to blow up Dawson Badia. That's going to be a false start on Perry. Well, that's fourth penalty of the So the that's half. Gonna, it's going to be first in um, Wichita yeah. for Perry. From their own 44-yard line. So first and 31 for the Maroons. Two receivers, one to the far, one to the near. Two back set. Now it's an offset backfield. Padilla under center. He's going to back to pass. He's rolling to his left, looking. He's going to fire. It's going to be out of bounds and incomplete to Braden Sweet as he took out the water bottles and everything. So it's going to be second and 31 for Perry. Yeah, I think Padilla ran out of options there, and he just he was kind of throwing it to the only place Sweet could get it and kind of threw it away, semi-throwing it away. Well, and Alba did a really good job plugging that side of the field yeah, up. Yeah, they got good there pressure was, there, on yeah, the first there time. Was, there was nowhere to throw the ball. Yeah, that's the first time tonight they've gotten pressure, so I give them credit. They give credit to the Alba cornerback. He used that line, the uh, sideline as another defender. Yeah, which what there was teacher, nowhere yeah. There was nowhere Braden could go, so brings up a second 31. So we got two receivers to the far side. we got a eye formation in the backfield. Padilla under center. Gets a snap. He's going to roll now to his left. He's under pressure in the backfield. He's going to fire. He's got Braden Sweet there. And he makes a tremendous catch at the 30-yard line. Falls down wow. at the 29. Uh, what a catch by the senior Braden Sweet from the 34-yard line to the 29. 
27. That's a 27 yard completion, and it brings up a third and five for the Maroons. Wow, that's a that's that'll that'll help get you from third and forever to third and manageable. What a catch by Braden yeah, Sweet though. Highest got, yes, he got did. It at the apex. I get. I bet Coach Landers is happy next door to me to yeah. my left. Padilla gets a, a snap. He's going to give it to Mason Taylor up the middle of the field. He gets to about the 26 yard line. Had a hole there, just didn't hit it hard enough. He got three yards, needed five, so it's going to bring up fourth and two for the Maroons. And I think they'll probably go for it again because they're at the 26, 25, somewhere 27-yard line. Perry 0 of 4 on third down tonight, which they really haven't needed. No. 1 of 1, on, or at least 1 of 2 on fourth down with so that touchdown. It'll be a, a fourth and 2. They've got to get to the 27. Actually, they are at the, the 27. They've got to get to the yeah. 25. The D under center, two receivers to the near side, one back set. That's Taylor. He's got a big hole got around it. the left side, has the first down, gets up to the 22-yard line. That is a seven-yard pickup and a first down. They'll give him to the 21, an eight-yard pickup and a first down for the Maroons. That's the ninth of the night for the Maroons. And there's second and three tries on fourth down, so that's good to see. Yeah, absolutely. That left side of the line was Blew just up collapsed. The hole, yes. Yeah, Reyes and, and Jones just collapsed that left side of the right side of the defensive line. So first and ten from the Alva Goldbug twenty one yard line. Two receivers to the near side. Two back set. That's an offset now. Two back. Padilla under center. Gets a snap. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to fire. He's got Joe Rupp over there. Caught at the 20, uh, 15 10. Makes a move. Gets across the five and dump trucked out of bounds at the three yard line. An 18 yard pickup and a first and goal for Perry. Joe Rupp with a little bit of a jitter move at the 15 yard line. Just made his, his defender fly right by him and went up the sideline and then ushered out of bounds at the three. That's one I'll take your word for, partner, because my sight line <laughs> availability is gone. Actually, they've got it at the two-yard line, so officially that's going to be a 19-yard pickup in a first down. First and goal at the two for Perry as they break the huddle. Two minutes and six, seven, six seconds to go in the third quarter. Easier said than, than what I just said. Two <laughs> receivers to the near side. Two back set again to Padilla under center. Gets a snap. He's going to hand it to Garrett Byer, and he's going to walk right in. Touchdown, Perry. Two yards on the plunge right on the right side of the line of the uh, offensive line and Perry strikes again it's 48 to nothing maroons <laughs> and he just walked in there partner you didn't see it but no i didn't uh yeah he he i don't think anybody wanted to part of Garrett Byer there no i wouldn't either they're like he's a semi, he's a uh, Big run runner back. up uh, wrestler we don't want anything oh, to do with him. Is he really? <laughs> state wrestler. Wow. Hopefully he'll get a state championship this year. It's his last chance. So Padilla under center for the two-point conversion, conversion, two receivers to the near side. He gets the snaps. going to hand it to Mason Taylor on the left side, trying to get into the end zone, and it's going to be no good. 48 to nothing. Perry with 145 to go in the third quarter. You're listening to Perry Marine Football on Triple Play Sports. The National Institute of Mental Health reports that one in four adults will experience a mental health disorder in a given year. I'm Marjorie McGinn, President and Executive Director of Women in Government. Talk to your health care provider because serious mental illness can be treated. Between 70 and 90 percent of individuals see significant symptom relief and improved quality of life. To learn more, please visit womeningovernment.org. And welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw as Perry is on top and rolling tonight. 48 to nothing. Well over 400 yards of offense tonight already, and we're not even through the third quarter. Minute 45 to go in the third, and Perry up 48 to nothing on a two-yard touchdown run by Garrett Byer. Point after attempt on the two-point conversion by Mason Taylor was no good. Look, we're over 500, partner. Well, I was, I was trying to be nice. Yeah, 516. So, Wow. Easily the best we've had all year. Oh uh, Yeah, the offensive output has been staggering tonight. Jansen Hartwig back to kick from his own 40-yard line to the Alva Gold Bugs. There's the whistle to put in play. There's the kick. And a much better kick. Uh, a short one down the center of the field, taking about the 27, 30, 35, 40. And wrestled right down right there about the 42-yard line. They're going to give him, yeah, the 42. So officially a 5, 10, 15, a 18-yard kick. For Jansen, I'm getting better at that. <laughs> math hey, was in the nick was, of playoff time too. Math was not that was not my subject. 
No, mine neither. I'm sorry, you know, if Mr. Sherman is listening, if Mr. Williams is listening, I'm sorry. It just it wasn't my strength. You know that. I don't know why I'm apologizing. I, you have me in your class, so there you go. <laughs> so first and ten for uh, Alva. Schlar under center, two back set. Gets the snap. He's going to uh, that pitch around the right side, and that's to Wheeler, I think. And he gets across the 45 and uh, – Colwell again. Colwell, excuse me. He gets across the, the 45 Colwell. and to the 44. So that's a pickup of actually four yards on the play. Actually give him five, excuse me, five yards on the play. Second and five for the Gold Bucks at the their own 47-yard line. All parry tonight, 48 to nothing. We thought it would be. Yeah, we've already got the backups going. I see Bole and Dakota. One receiver to the – Far side, two back set. Schlarer to center, gets the snap. He's going to get the pitch. And, uh, boy, he had it stopped in the backfield. Now he's under pressure, and down he Chad goes. 40-yard line, a five, or excuse me, a four-yard loss. Excuse me, yeah, a six-yard loss to the 41. And, boy, he had that pitch around the right side to try to go to the well again, and he cut it back to the left. And that was Caldwell in a good uh, pursuit by the Perry Marine defense. Uh, Chad Lyle and Brandon Douglas. The young one's in there now. 25 seconds to go, third quarter. All Perry, 48 to nothing. Yeah, and we, I said first couple possessions, they'd leave him, they'd leave him in, but I, I, I'm not surprised they're going to the well already. Third and 11, upcoming for Alba. They are two of, two of eight tonight on third down. Under 10 seconds to go. Schlar under center, two back set, two receivers, one of the near, one to the far. He's back to pass. He's under pro. No, he, he, he handed off. off to a big guy. Gosh, he rumbles rum and stumbles. I think that's Meyer. Across the 50 gets down to the 45, and that is Meyer. Yeah, he's pretty tall. And he gets it from the 41 to the 45, so officially, let's see, 5, 10, 15. That's 15, and then we'll call it a 19-yard pickup and a first down. I don't even have him on here. Yeah, I didn't put him on. No, he did. I, I raced a couple of guys because I didn't see him run last week, so and, that's my fault. And that is the end of the third quarter. Your Perry Maroons lead at 48 to nothing. We're going to take a timeout. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. Hey, Maroon fans. Are you looking for a great dentist? Look no further than Custom Dental and Dr. Dewhurst and let your fear disappear. Have you heard about the Maroon Fan Special? Be one of the first 10 callers and take advantage of our Let's Get Acquainted appointment and get $100 off any new dental services found needed by Dr. Dewhurst. This Let's Get Acquainted appointment includes exams, x-rays, and a private consultation for only $38. Don't wait. Call 336-2310 right now and tell our team you want the Perry Maroon fan special. Go Maroons, go! The world needs a lot of energy to run, so we care about where and how it's produced. At Devon Energy, we're not just providing energy, but responsible ways to supply it. That's why we're proud supporters of the areas where we live and work. Because just as important as what the world needs today is what it needs for tomorrow. Devon Energy. Commitment runs deep. And welcome back to Alvo Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. As Slar takes the snap, gives it to Meyer around the right. Excuse me, that's Harsman around the right side. Gets across the 40 to the 35, across the 30, and out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That's a big pickup once again, an 18-yard pickup and a first down for Alva want to let you know this game is brought to you in part by Devon Energy, who take pride in sponsoring local communities and events where they operate. Visit DevonEnergy.com today to learn more about how they're one of the world's leading oil and natural gas producers. Devon Energy commitment runs deep. And let's see if the defense, the young defense now for the Maroons, can be committed here. Two receivers, one to the near, one to the far, two back set. That's Harsman with the carry on the left side. Cuts it back up the middle of the field. Gets across the 25, falls forward to the 20-yard line, a pickup of eight yards, and it brings up a second and two for the Bucks. Yeah, I had uh, Zach Lowry, sophomore, in on the tackle there. How many yards was that? Sorry. That was an eight-yard pickup. Oh, gosh. <laughs> pay attention. I was trying to see who made the tackle. Actually, they gave him nine. Okey-doke. Second and one now from the 19. I'm surprised they didn't give him the touchdown. <laughs> Sorry. Slar under center, two receivers, two back set. He's going to hand it off to Harsman around the left side, has some room, gets across the 15, Hit. falls forward to about the 14. That's a first down, a six-yard pickup, and a first down for Alva. And now they're, that's their 11th first down, and Perry's young defense is in there. Now they are, they are controlling the first down category. They have 11. Perry only has nine yeah, or I ten. See, you know, I see Golden. He's a freshman. He's a senior, but he doesn't play too much. Looks like they put Randall back in. No, that's got to be Bole. So first and ten from the Perry Maroon 14-yard line. Two receivers, one to the near, one to the far, two back set. 
Schlar gets the uh, snap, pitches it back to Harsman around the right side. He's going to be pursued nice, pursued nicely by the Perry Maroons around that right side. Falls forward to maybe the 12. So give him a pickup of two officially, second and eight for the Bugs. I yeah, saw so, uh, Dakota in on that play and uh, the younger Hartwig and uh, 35, Hunter Dias. Is that how you say that? Yes. Yes. Did you, do I have him on your sheet? Yeah, 35. Do I have him on your defensive sheet? Oh, no. Okay. No. They break the huddle. Second and eight now for the Bugs. Two receivers once again. Two back set. That offset eye formation. Slar under center. Gets a snap. He's going to roll to his left, looking to fire and pass. Nice. Oh, oh man, nice, uh, move. nice move. But he gets around the, the left side. He was about to get sacked. And, boy, just couldn't make that sack. I think that was Douglas. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Slar too. gets across the 10 to about the, oh, we'll call it the 7. So we'll give him five yards in the play. Brings up a third and three for the Bugs at the Perry Maroon, uh, see, seven yard line. Douglas was in the backfield for the sack, but he just couldn't make the play. And he's going to come off right now. Under 10 minutes to go. Perry on top, 48 to nothing. Trying to preserve, preserve a shutout here, but Alva driving at the Perry Maroon eight yard line. Or excuse me, seven yard line. Sar into center. Gets a snap. He's going to roll to his left again. Has running room again on that left side. But nice tackle over there. Uh, didn't get the first down. He's near it. But I, I think that was uh, Diaz again. That was Diaz. Hunter Diaz over there. Got to, they're going to call it the five. So it's going to be officially fourth and one from the five. Be nice for our young defense to get a stop here. Oh, absolutely. That would just give them all the confidence in the world. Maybe going into their – is their JV season over? Yes. So oh, okay. Yeah, they unfortunately did not win the game. Fourth uh, and one. Happens. Fourth and one upcoming. Slar under center, two receivers, two back set. He's going to get the snap. He's going to hand it off to Harsman. He goes up the middle for the touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run for Alva, and Alva's on the board. 48-6 to six as Harsman goes up the middle for the rushing touchdown. And it's uh, 8.58 to go in the fourth quarter. And Alva is finally on the board. And they will, I think they're going to set up to go for the extra point. Yes, they are. And let me see who they. Interesting. They went for two last week. They went for two, so. I just think that maybe Caldwell kicking? Caldwell. I don't no, know if that, that's not Caldwell. That's Wheeler, 20. Wheeler back to kick. Huh? Snap back, ball down, kick is on the way. It's up and it's good. It's split. No, it's no good. What? You know, it's no good. They said it was wide to the left and. Huh. Good it's 48-6, to six and we'll take a break. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. Follow up with your team and favorite players in the Perry Daily Journal, supplying your local news for 120 years. The PDJ is a proud supporter of Perry Maroon athletes, from headlines to classified, covering Noble County for more than a century. Pick up a paper or check out our e-edition today to keep current on all of Noble County news. Visit our website at www.pdjnews.com to subscribe and friend us on Facebook. And welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw as Perry leads us in 48-6. Alva got on the board with a five-yard touchdown run by Harsman right up the middle. Two point, or the point after tip was no good, and that's where we stand, 48-6. to six. And I want to let you guys know, uh, if you're heading on down to the Dell City area next week for playoffs, Christian Heritage Academy, the football field is off of I-240 and Sooner Road. It's right behind a huge church, uh, the Southern Baptist Church. So you cannot miss it. You can park behind the church, but you cannot park on the field. So um, it's I-240 and Sooner Road is where we're going to be next week. I believe it's going to be 730, but I will check that. Make sure you check CampbellCommunicationsOK.com to check out when the playoff game will occur next Friday. So a little cleanup action. Uh, but back to kick, and that's Costello. They're going to onside it, and it's fumbled there for a little bit, but recovered nicely, and that was, I think that was, uh, it was Devin Blancett. Was it Blancett? Nice. Devin Blancett recovers the onside kick at the 47-yard line. That's where Perry will uh, will set up shot first and 10 from their own 47, leading 48-6. to six. And the starters are coming back out, partner. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that yeah. is an interesting call. I might have to – that might be a question that I ask Coach after the game. We well, got the clock at. Sorry. Uh, 8.56 and rolling. Well, I did say maybe the first three possessions. <laughs> so – 
We do have a different uh, running back in there, it looks like, for the Maroons. Two receivers, one of the near, one of the far. Dawson Petito under center. Got an eye formation. I'm not sure if that's Santoy. Can't tell. And he's going to give it to That's the running Lyle. back. That's Lyle on the left side. 50-45 cuts in and gets to the 40-yard line. Sophomore. And that is a big play. That is a, uh, let's see, 47 to, that's 7, uh, seven 12. Mm -hmm. And that is a 17, uh, 12 and 5. Yeah, 17-yard pickup and a first down. Oh, sophomore Lyle getting the first carry of the year. I apologize. I didn't recognize him back there, so. So it's first down, uh, Lyle on the carry, Chad Lyle. First down, Perry yeah, at nice the night tonight. Alva 40-yard line. De Padilla under center. Gets a snap. He's going to hand uh -oh. it to Garrett Byer right up the middle. And He's just no. dragging tacklers across the 30, <laughs> 30, uh, 25. Got a flag, that's and that's going to be a face mask. mask. It's got to yeah. be a face mask. They're going to give him officially to the 23. Nice run. So his run is about 17 yards, and see what <laughs> they tack on. Boy, partner, that first guy at 61 met him in the hole. and, and didn't, He didn't want any part of him. No, and, and Byer just kind of shoved him. Oh, it's going to be holding on the Maroons, negate the play. Wow. The, the Where he threw the flag wow. was that's not usually where holding yeah, was. That's he was throwing it like at the pile where Byer was. That's, that's usually weird. face mask. You're right, partner. Well, I guess they could take that. And they're going to take it from the, the spot of the foul. Wish we could hear so down there. So officially it's going to be a, no, uh, it's gonna be a one-yard loss or one-yard penalty. Yeah, so one-yard penalty on the face mask. So uh, we'll negate the yardage for Garrett Byer on his I don't know where best that, run of the year. That means the hold came down there, and I didn't yeah. see anybody holding. I, I just either. saw seven people trying to tackle Garrett. Well, we got two receivers, one of the near, one of the far. I formation, Padilla under center. Gets a snap. He's going to throw short to Braden Sweet on the 40-yard line. Cuts back to the 35. Dump truck down there. They'll give him the 34-yard line to pick up a seven yards, and it brings up a second and three upcoming for – or second and four for Perry. Another nice uh, nice little quick out to Sweet. He's got, it, he's got almost 200 yards, partner. Call it second and five officially. So, second and five from the Maroons at the Alva Goldbug 35-yard line. Two receivers, one to the near, one to the far. Two back set. Padilla under center gets the snap. He's going to hand it to Lyle line over there. Again. Big hole, 30, 25, and hit down at the 20, cross the 20-yard line to the 19. And they actually gave him the 18-yard line. That's a huge pickup of 17 yards and a first down for Perry. Good grief. Man, just... Chad Lyle around <laughs> the left side. It's just been open. All they gave night. him the 17, so give him an 18-yard pickup. First two carries of the season are 17 and 18 yards. That's a good job, 636 Chad. and rolling before this one's over. Perry driving once again. Padilla under center, two receivers, one to the near, one to the far, two back set. Padilla under center gets a shot, uh, the snap, hands it to Garrett Byer, and he rumbles and stumbles the road grader across the 15, and he gets to the 15-yard line. That's a uh, pickup of only two yards. Actually, nope, that's a pickup. A four? Four yards. We'll give him four yards in the play. Excuse About me. So seven, second and six. Seven gold bugs in on the tackle on that one. <laughs> they were just riding him. Team effort. <laughs> they were wannabe Rangers. Uh, I know that was reaching. <laughs> uh, two receivers, one in the near, one to the far two back set. Padilla under center. Offside. And offside, it looks like on be Alva. Offsides. And it's finally going to go on Alva. Offside Alva, so that's going to move the ball five yards up the field. Brings up a second and one. That is their first penalty of the night. Chandler Ebers Ebersall comes in, and Joe Ruff's going to go out. He's had a good night tonight. Yeah, he has. So we're just sprinkling in players now. It looks like we Braden Sweet has come out too, so we've got another receiver wow, over here. I was to hoping Braden could get 200 yards. Padilla under center, two back set, two receivers. One of the near, one of the far. Gets a snap. He's going to hand it to Lyle on the left side. Big hole again, 10, get in there, 5, Chandler. and hit down hard at the 1. So we'll give him officially, gosh, the scoreboard went blank. Where were we at? Uh, I wasn't. Dang it. Where were we? Uh, from the 20. No, I don't think it was the 20. No. It was like the 18, 18. 17 or 18. So another about 16 yards. 16 yards and on the carry. So first a goal from the two. Padilla under center, two back set once again. Hands off to Garrett Byer. Now he's going to take himself on the zone read. Goes in for the touchdown. Two-yard touchdown run. Dawson Padilla right up the center of the gut of the, of the, li of the line of scrimmage. He's offensive line, and he was just pushed in. So it's a two-yard touchdown run for Padilla. 54-6, to six, Perry on top. And Padilla gets in on the rushing attack tonight as he gets his rushing touchdown. So he's got four touchdowns through the air and one on the ground. And Dawson 
that's going to get his confidence up for next week. Oh, absolutely. Two point. 130 yards on the air tonight. Two-point conversion attempt. Padilla under center. Gets a snap. He's going to hand it. No, he's going to hand it to Lyle around the left side. Nobody's there to even touch him. He goes in untouched for the two-point conversion. 56-6 to six with 5.02 to go. We're going to take another timeout. You're listening to Perry Moon Football and Triple Play Sports. We have a simple message for our local residents and neighbors. The best patient experience in healthcare isn't an hour away. It's right here at Stillwater Medical Center. We're pledging excellence. And our physicians, nurses, and staff are promising compassionate care every day. So when you need understanding, attentive treatment, you can stay close to home. Learn more by visiting stillwatermedical.com. And welcome back to Alba, Oklahoma in Woods County here. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. And it's just been... The just the offensive just blowout Onslaught, that we've yeah. we've we expected and it's been frustration taking out on the gold bugs. I'm sorry if you got Alva listeners listening to us or or uh, people that uh, might be from Alva that are listening to Perry, but you know I, it is what it is. Perry has just played really bad the last five weeks, and we we said this was was what could happen if we played, and they have come out here and they played, and they're ready to go to playoffs next yeah, week. Absolutely. I believe so. Do you have any idea on the passing yard record for the school? I have no idea. Yeah. Where are we at? 329. But he is at 329. Yeah, it's probably it's probably pushing it. Back to kick is now Jansen Hartwig. A very short kick. It's uh, it's a live ball, and it's finally taken at the 40-yard line. Now he's going to take the wow. the whole crowd with him the across the 45-yard line to the 40. Yeah, they're going to mark him down at the 44. That, that was the wrong guy. We were watching. Oh, okay. We were watching blockers drag each other. I thought they were they thought they thought they were dragging I guess they their up they man. The ball, yeah. But uh, they're going to spot him at the 43-yard line. So officially a 5, 10, 15, a 17-yard kick for Jansen on the net. And it'll be first and 10 for Alva at their own uh, 43-yard line. Down 56 to six, and let's see if our defense can hold him here, get a stop, and no more points. With 4:37 to go in the ball game and rolling, it is a rolling clock. I just figured that out. Slaughter under center. He's going to hand off to Wheeler around the left side. Gets across the 45, falls forward to the 49. They gave him no. They gave him the 49. That's a six-yard pickup, and he brings up a second and four. So yes, we to answer your question, it has been a rolling clock this half. Oh, okay. Because they put the play in motion after the kickoff, and. Yeah. Or maybe they do that after the, kick, after the kickoffs. Maybe they decided that. Yeah, just after kicks, yeah, because yeah, it definitely doesn't start until the play starts. Second and four, Schlar under center. Off. Two back set. He's going to get the snap, Wheeler, hands it yeah. to Wheeler over there on the left side. Gets across the 45, falls forward to about the 42-yard uh, line, 41-yard line maybe, and that's going to be a eight-yard pickup and a first down for the goal bucks. Yeah. Wheeler's a senior. I suspect trying to get him as many carries as he can since his high school career will be over, unfortunately for him. Clock moving, 339 and counting before this one's over. 56 to 6. The Maroons on top. It's been all Perry tonight, which is what we expected. And you just it's hard to watch this Alva team because you're used to seeing them being a decent team and they've just yeah. just fallen on a bad year. Yeah, they really have. Slar under center, two back set. He's going to get the snap. He's going to back, back to pass, firing, and it's low and incomplete. As he had a receiver over there on the left side, but it was too low for him to go down and get it. So it's going to bring up a second, or excuse me, a third and ten for the Gold Bugs. Three ten. That stopped though. Oh yeah, it did stop. So it must be after kicks. Hmm. <clears throat> so third and ten for Alva. At the Perry Maroon 39-yard line. Actually, we'll call it the 41-yard line. Clock operator doesn't know that's the 41. Slar under center, two back set. Gets a snap. He's going to hand it to uh, Wheeler, Wheeler again. again over the left side. Same play. He's close to a first down. There's a Should flag. A and we might have a holding up the field here. And that's going to be on uh, 75 for Perry. He was getting hold. Held. Yeah. That was McCray Williams. Surely that's going to be holding on Alva. And it is. Holding on the goal bugs way up the field, and, and Wheeler was close to the first down, so that's going to negate that play. See where they mark the ball. They'll mark it from the spot of the foul, so officially it's going to be a no, no gain on the play. 
So to bring up a third and eight. Looks like they're past. Looks like the second. Actually, down. we'll say third and eleven. The scoreboard says third and eight, but it is third and eleven. Uh, second part. I think. Second. Yeah, because the penalty down does goes over. So second and eleven. I guess Slar back to pass now. Costello on the on the on pitch, looking for a receiver, has his man open, He's and out it's of out of bounds, incomplete, as he was juggling the ball as well too. So it's no good over there on the far side of the field. Carter Castillo throws a good ball. I, I, just, I guess he'll probably be the court. Maybe he'll be the quarterback next year. And that brings that. That's a fourth down. It's fourth down. Actually, I I don't know it's, what down it's they're third, on. It should be third down because that last play was a penalty, and you, you the play okay. penalty the play goes over. The scoreboard operator is confusing me. It's yeah. third and eleven. He's not paying much attention. With two thirty four, and they just rolled the clock. So I think uh, the coaches have both agreed to just roll the clock now. Right. That's. Probably for the best. 225 to go in the ball game. 56 to 6, Perry on top. Slar under center, two back set, gets the snaps, going to get the same pitch play again to, to uh, Costello, but good penetration by Perry. He throws down the uh, f- uh, f- uh, near sideline. It's incomplete off the hands of 84 for Alba. That's Noah McCosker. He had a man there, but good job of making something out of nothing for Costello. He was under heavy duress, but very good pursuit by the Perry Marine defense. It's going to bring up a fourth and 11 for Alva. Yeah, that I couldn't see who the pressure was. Um, might have been Williams, 75. I think it was McCray. I, McCray I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was McCray Williams on the pressure on the hurry. Yeah, we got we got Hortons in there now. We got uh, Shadowin, Crow, 44. Is it Shadowin or Shadowin? I say Shadowin. It okay. might be Shadowin. Alva's going to take a timeout after all that melee with 2.02 to go. And 4th and 11 upcoming for the Gold Bugs. I need to do my job because they are now 3 of uh, 11 on 3rd down. So we got <clears throat> Bocox is playing. I saw uh, Tovar in earlier too, another freshman. Destry? Yeah, mm-hmm. number 18. Uh, get some weight on him, partner. He comes from an athletic family. I'm telling you right now. Get some weight on him. He gets a little growth spurt. He's going to be a good player. Yeah, he's pretty tall. I'm really interested in this Golden kid. Uh, yeah. 78. Justin Golden. 6'1", 215 freshman. Mm-hmm. We might look forward we to called him. called his name a couple times last yeah. week. Yeah, last week too. He might look for him to be on the one of the lines next year. Yeah, that's something that Perry's going to have to do. They're going to, they're going to have to rebuild the defensive and the offensive lines. Uh, for Dawson Padilla yeah. and coming back Austin Reyes and Drake Dell and, and those kind of players, Colby Mendenhall. Um, so those are definitely going to be some areas that Coach Bennett and his staff are going to look at on the off season and try to get kids in, into the weight room and get bigger and get stronger. Well, Bla- hey. ba- Bailey Burdick, I'm really interested to see how he does in the off season. Six three two forty five. He's got a chance to be good. Alva breaks the huddle. It's fourth and eleven. Two receivers, one of the near, one of the far. Two back set. Schlar back to pass. Screen. He's going to uh, set up Uh-oh. the screen. It's intercepted by James Hardwick. 45-50, 45-40, and he's down at the 41-yard line. And another interception by Hartwig. I think that was. That was Crow. That was Crow. I'm sorry. That was uh, uh, Clifton Crow. Clifton Crow. Sorry, I couldn't think of his first name. Clifton Crow on the interception. And uh, mark that down so we can. Oh, you got that. And we'll give him a, a, a – he got it about the 45, 50, 45. So we'll give him a 14-yard uh, interception return. And it brings up uh, first down for Perry. And that's Slar's uh, second interception of the night. How many yards was it? That was a 14-yard. We'll give him. Okay. Eversaw coming on late for Perry as they're trying to get lined up. We've got two receivers, one to the far side, one to the near. Two back set in the eye formation. Looks like Liam Clawson in at quarterback he is. He's going to hand off to – uh, Lyle around the left side. He's going to lose yardage at the 45, and that's going to be a four-yard loss for for Lyle. Brings up a second and 14 for Perry. Under two minutes to go. 135 to go. 56 to six. Perry on top, and we'll go to six and four overall, and four and two in the district. And we we will be going and playing number 10 Christian Heritage, the Crusaders, in Dell City next week in the first round of the playoffs. Which, all intents and purposes, they're going to be eight and two tonight because they have Northeast and they're not going to get beat by Northeast. Yeah, Northeast coming in zero and nine. Two receivers, one to the near, one to the far, two back set. I formation. Liam Clawson gets the snaps, going to hand it to the first man through. I think that's Crow. Crow. Yeah, he's the fullback. Gets across the forty-five to about the forty. We'll call it the forty-two yard line. They gave him officially, so they gave him three yards under a minute to go. Brings up a second, or excuse me, a third and ten for the Maroons. Actually, we'll call it third and eleven. 
no hurry here. Play clock at 24 now. Getting some other bodies in here. Perry will win this one 56 to 6. It's number 8, looks like Hamilton. Where's Hamilton? Yeah, where's Santoy? Santoy is ineligible. Oh, my fault. <laughs> they break the huddle there. One receiver to the near, one to the far, one uh, eye formation again. Colossal under center. Gets a snap. He's going to take it himself around oh, the left man. side. Has a room. 40. And he's going to be ushered out of oh, bounds. Hard out of bounds. 72 has been doing that. Uh, Hugh Banks, it's 56 to 6, yeah. pal. You need to calm down. Yeah. Uh, he got ushered out of bounds hard at the 39. So we'll officially give him three yards, and the play brings up a fourth and eight for the Maroons. They called they call a penalty on us earlier for doing that same thing, but whatever. Perry 0 of 5 on third down conversion. See if they run the clock here with 14 seconds. Nope. Third How many gonna, yards did they give Liam? They gave him officially three. Uh, actually, they gave him eight. So it was fourth and – it was third and 13. They gave him eight. Actually, no, no, no. Wait. Gave him six. It was third and 11. So now it's fourth and five. And Perry will go for it. No need to punt. Yeah, the clock's running down too, right? Nope. Two receivers, one of the wow. near, one of the far. I formation. Liam Clausen under center. He takes it himself, goes across the 25 to the 32. That should be – that's going to be close. And he, he's going to – I think he's – I don't think he's going to – They gave yeah, him the first down. He gave him five yards on the first down, and that's going to be the last play of the ball game. As that is Perry's 14th first down, and that's the last play of the ball game. Your Perry Maroons victorious tonight, 56 to six. Keep it right here. We'll recap the stats and uh, all that good information for you, and we'll get out of here quickly because we got a long drive. You're listening to Perry Maroon football on Triple Play Sports. Hey, football fans! The crunch, crack, and bang of bones go along with gridiron football, but where do you go when your bones take a hit? Turn to Stillwater's own Ortho, Oklahoma. As bone and joint specialists, our board-certified orthopedic physicians join physical therapists and nurses to treat your injuries with hometown friendliness and expert care. At Ortho, Oklahoma, we are keeping you together. Learn more at orthook.com or call 405-707-0900. Duty. Neighbors united for the common good. Honor. The faith that dedication to a noble cause is right, just, and good. Country. A vow to support our nation's people during desperate times. Duty. Honor. Country. We're the Army National Guard. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. Army National Guard. You can. Sponsored by the Oklahoma National Guard. Aired by the Oklahoma Association of Broadcasters in this station. Welcome back to Alva, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw as the final tonight, 56-6. to Perry victorious and goes to 6-4 and on the year, 4-2 and in district. And, uh, Mike, it was just all Perry, and we'll go through the stats and we'll, we'll show you how lopsided it really was tonight. Yep, thanks, Brock. Uh, visiting Maroons had 590 total yards of offense. It's definitely a season high and probably a high for maybe a couple years. I don't know. Exactly, I don't have the stats going back that far, obviously. But 329 through the air, four touchdowns for Padilla, 261 on the ground, four rushing touchdowns, eight total touchdowns, zero turnovers, nine penalties for 70 yards. That's a point of emphasis need to be talked about. And uh, time of possession, 1944. And for Alva, it was not, not pretty. 133 total. Eight yards through the air, 125 on the ground, uh, most of that was in the fourth quarter. One touchdown, two turnovers, two penalties for eight yards, and 28-16 time possession. I'll do individual real quick. Okay. Hatfield, eight carries, 181 yards, or a 22.6-yard average. Good grief. And then it was, it was bad, so bad that Chad Lyle, you know, he was playing, and uh, it was going so good for us, I mean. Let me let me stop you there. How advantageous is it going to be for us to have Hatfield and possibly Mendenhall going into next week? It's going to be great because you can run them both in the backfield. Because you've got experience yeah. now. Hatfield knows what to do now. Yeah, Hatfield's probably got close to yeah. probably over 300 yards now yeah. and plenty of carries. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry. Padilla, 18 of 24 through the air. Oh, no, not 24. 18 of 27, so only nine incompletions. Uh, very good percentage for him tonight. His highest percentage of the year, 67%. Sweet had a huge day. Seven receptions, 191 yards, three touchdowns. That's like a Justin Blackman day. Uh, Drake Dale, four for 55 and a touch. And Joe Rupp, six for 76. And those are the, the key stats of the game. 
And that was the stats of the game brought to you by the Womack Agency, Steve Womack and the insurance agency. There's post game sponsor. We're going to take our first time out of the post game. We'll come back and we'll have a, we're not going to have a, 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 a coach's interview. We'll come back with some closing remarks, take another break, and then get out of here, get to set for the playoffs next week with the Christian Heritage Crusaders. You're listening to Prairie Marine Football on Triple Play Sports. With First Bank and Trust Company, we've been providing sensible home mortgages to your friends and neighbors for years. We can help you find the mortgage with the right terms just for you. We're committed to helping you with a broad range of programs and personalized service. Call Michelle Woods or me today at 580-336-5562 or you can apply online at bankfbt.com or with our convenient mortgage app. First Bank and Trust Company is an equal housing lender, member FDIC. To win football games, it takes great coaching, hard work, and talent. To stay in business for 19 years, Vance Chevrolet GMC Buick of Perry has valued its customers, providing them with friendly, outstanding service and the best prices around. Our customers tell us we're a comfortable place to buy a car. If you haven't experienced the Vance Perry difference, come by for a visit. You'll be glad you did. Vance Chevrolet GMC Buick, family owned and operated for 19 years, where it's comfortable to buy a car. What if we got rewarded for every good decision? Dinner. Neil needs a vegetable. Check. Amazing. Vegetables cooked with a healthier oil instead of butter? Fantastic. Replacing bad fats with healthier fats, like those in canola or vegetable oil, is good for your heart. Take up the challenge for good health, because the you of the future will say, Fantastic! Visit heart.org slash face the facts. Canola Info proudly supports the American Heart Association's Face the Facts campaign. Follow up with your team and favorite players in the Perry Daily Journal, supplying your local news for 120 years. The PDJ is a proud supporter of Perry Maroon athletes, from headlines to classifieds, covering Noble County for more than a century. Pick up a paper or check out our e-edition today to keep current on all Noble County news. Visit our website at www.pdjnews.com to subscribe and friend us on Facebook. The Perry Marine Post Game Show is brought to you by the Womack Insurance Agency. Farmers Insurance Agent, the Womack. The Womack Insurance Agency is located at 23 Delaware Street in Perry, where you can call Steve at 580-336-6300. Steve also invites you to visit his website at www.farmersagent.com backslash S. Womack. Farmers Insurance, we've got you covered. And welcome back to... Alva, Oklahoma, Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw. We're going to do an abbreviated version of the post game tonight because we got to get on the road. We've got a two-and-a-half-hour drive for me and Mike as we live in Oklahoma City right now. But it was just all it was all Perry tonight, just uh, point blank. Uh, Alva just hadn't, didn't have any answers, and their youth is just – it's just incredible that uh, what they had last year to what they have this year. Um, they've got a lot of learning curve to, to go, Mike, before they're – going to be able to compete in this district. This is one of the toughest districts in 2A and they were they they had, you know, the the players the last couple of years and competing in this district really well, but this may be a very very big uphill climb for this uh, Gold Bucks uh, team. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to take a lot for them to well, you know, get back and you know, cuz the freshmen a lot of freshmen had to play and that's good for experience, but you know, they're still just going to be sophomores next year. And yeah. anytime you run freshmen or rook and or rookies at any level, you're generally not going to be very good. And that's the case. That's the case with unless they're just exceptional players. Right. You might get a one or two, but as a group, when you have to play 15 kids that aren't even juniors, they probably can't even drive. At at any level, you're going to be, especially at the high school level, you're going to be behind the eight ball. And uh, we, I look, I kind of look look forward to seeing how they'll be next year. With so much youth, you know, a lot of kids back. We'll see. I think they'll, yeah, depending on the coaching, how the coaching situation goes, yeah, they could be better next happen. year. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of unknowns, I guess, yeah. about them. So we had a lot of stars tonight for Perry. Um, uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, uh, since you did the stats, go ahead and uh, let's pick the, the offensive player of the game, the v- defensive player of the game. How, so. how do I do that? How, how, do, how do, do I you toss it up? Uh, yeah, Padilla looked really good tonight. You know, he's he's been down a little bit, throwing a lot of picks. I think we should give Padilla the. We'll do an offense. overall. We'll do an overall. Okay. Let's, well, do, let's do Dawson as overall. Because he had that rushing touchdown, yeah. too. So that's five touchdowns. So overall, Dawson, I had – Sweet had 191 yards. That's huge. Okay. And so it's offensive. And defensively, Byer, it wasn't much for the first team to do on offensively. Uh, and even you could put 
uh, Brian Hatfield in there honorable mention, even though it's not honorable mention right. because he had 181 yards rushing. So yeah, on offense, it was just a, a embarrassment of riches tonight. Yeah, I put Byer defensively seven and a half tackles. Okay. You know, a couple for loss. Write those on there. It's on the back there. Yeah. Uh, so I know. And uh, but anyways, uh, if you haven't listened to us, I uh, hope you. Ha- shame on you for not listening to us. But uh, the final score tonight was fifty-six to six. We're going to take another timeout. Uh, get our timeout taken care of. Come back. We'll get you set for the playoffs next week at Christian Heritage in Dell City. You're listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. The world needs a lot of energy to run. We care about where and how it's produced. At Devon Energy, we're not just providing energy but responsible ways to supply it. That's why we're proud supporters of the areas where we live and work. Because just as important as what the world needs today is what it needs for tomorrow. Devon Energy. Commitment runs deep. Campbell Communications is proud to sponsor and to bring you Perry Maroon Athletics. To become a sponsor, please visit www.campbellcommunicationsok.com or call and ask for Brock at 405 204 Four two four six Campbell Communications, where we bring the game to you. More than one million wild animals are killed each year illegally. Poaching is a major threat to our country's wildlife. I'm Tom Barry. I'm an actor with a desire to preserve living space for wildlife. The Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust does just that. Work with private landowners to protect wildlife to preserve natural habitats. To learn more or to work with the Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust, call 800-729-SAVE. That's 800-729-SAVE, or visit wildlifelandtrust.org. Thank you. When your insurance policy comes from us, it comes with something extra. A real person. Don't buy from an 800 number with a voicemail menu. The Womack Agency is here to help you with all of your insurance needs, auto, home life, and business. You can visit them at 623 Delaware Street right here in Perry, Oklahoma, or call them at 580-336-6300. You can also visit their website at www. Dot farmersagent.com backslash S. Woman. <laughs> And welcome back to Ava, Oklahoma. Brock Campbell alongside Mike Shaw as we're getting this one wrapped up. Perry wins it's 56 to 6 to go 6 and 4 overall on the year and finish 4 and 2 in the district. In third place, solidifies. Uh, we're in the playoffs anyway. We're third place going into tonight, win or lose. But they are in third place tonight. They will visit the Christian Heritage Crusaders next week in the first round of the playoffs. They will probably finish 8 and 2 overall. Um, uh, looking at the opponents uh, from last year. They beat Luther 51 to 50, and we beat Luther at home. So, I think maybe tonight. Actually, I won't, I won't say maybe. I think tonight, our team got their mojo back. Yeah, I really do. I think they understand that they are a good team when they're executing. And if they execute like they did tonight next week, they're going to go and uh, they're going to go and upset the Christian Heritage Crusaders. I think so too. You, but that being said, we do know how the opponent tonight won't be anything near. Right. No, it's, it's going to be a step up but in competition. Sometimes, many steps. Sometimes with confidence, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You just it doesn't matter who's out there. If you're confident, sometimes you can beat anybody, and it's it won't be like a. And and you got to believe that you can beat them. I talked yeah, to some of the to. guys because they know they're in the playoffs before the game, and they were like, "Yeah, Christian Heritage is very beatable. They're top. They're number ten in Class Two A. Even though they lost last week, they stayed in the top ten, which I thought was kind of interesting. Maybe because it's OCS. Um, I don't know. I but um, and the OCS, they only. Lost to OCS 27 to 21. Now we know that they got a mobile quarterback that can throw the ball. They've got some good receivers, and they've got a really good running back too. I looked at their stats. He's got a lot of yards and a lot of touchdowns too. Mm-hmm. So they're dual threat. You're going to have a lot of covers, and you're going to have to really be defensively sound and tackle at the point of contact. You can't give many yak yards next week. Yeah. You know we've had problems with that with Stroud, with Cashin, with uh, Hennessy, and with Chisholm. We've had problems with that. We hit them, but then. You know, we don't wrap up. We don't, you know, we're not in good position defensively in the secondary. Right. So there's things that they can work on this week, but it's it's going to be a tougher opponent next week. But the thing is, you're in the dance. Yeah, that's you're all you're going to ask for, yeah. You're there for the first time in two years, and uh, it's not that far of a drive. So everybody that can go to the game, please go to the game and support these kids. Uh, the ones that came here tonight, hats off to you. It's a long drive. Uh, we really appreciate you having uh, being here. And if you're driving home, please drive safe. Um because uh, me and Mike have got a long drive, too, yeah. as well. So that's why we're cutting this short. But uh, uh, Christian Heritage Academy next week, the Crusaders, we're going to be taking on that team. It'll be in Dell City. The the field, what I'm told, is on the uh, intersection of I-240 and Sooner Road. It's behind the Southern Baptist Church. 
So, and you can park behind this, that church. There's lots of parking lots. So I-240 and Sooner Road is where you need to uh, make your plans to be there next week. 7.30, I believe. I'm going to double-check that. Double-check Oklahoma uh, – not Oklahoma. Double-check double CampbellCommunicationsOK.com for the information so I can get that straight for you this uh, earlier this week. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I want to thank my partner, Mike Shaw, for doing an excellent job again on stats and everything with uh, the obstacles he had to overcome tonight. Yeah, I was really complaining <laughs> so, before the game, guys. You should have heard me. <laughs> Really I'm used to it. it I just, if you notice, I'm used to it. I just kind of shook it off. Yeah, you do now. You used to like, <laughs> Mike, don't. You used to get back at me, but you know that I just complain. I'm uh, complaining. It, it's not worth arguing with you because, yeah. Because I always win yeah. one. No, we're, we're both strong-willed. That's why I don't <laughs> yeah. go there anymore. So, But anyways, he does an awesome job for us. He's done a great job this year. Um, I'm, we've loved bringing you football season again, and uh, we're going to the playoffs. This is just a joy for both of us to do, watch these kids grow and, and just – learn their craft and, and the relationship we have with them and the coaches is just amazing. Uh, we appreciate all the support from the fans and everything too. So I think Mike, so I want to thank Kevin McCoy back in the studio doing an Thanks, awesome Kev. job uh, for our producing and our engineer. He's going to be with us next week for the uh, first round playoffs. I also want to thank Jordan Woodruff, our station manager, Bill Coleman, our CEO for allowing us to do this for you and bring yeah. Perry Marine sports. Thanks a lot. Um, I want to thank you, the fans and the alumni, all the sponsors up and down the line. Appreciate you all. Uh, as as much as I, I can't say that enough, we can't do it without you. So uh, we're going to have one more game, uh, and we'll just keep growing on the, on this train, and hopefully we'll have more after that. But uh, we're going to be in the playoffs next week against Christian Heritage, uh, uh, the Crusaders, at 730 on Friday most likely. So with that, for the final time, the score tonight, your Perry Maroons victorious 56-6. to You've been listening to Perry Maroon Football on Triple Play Sports. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to Perry Maroon Football. Perry Murray Football has been brought to you by Brown Duggar Funeral Home, Custom Dental, Devon Energy Corporation, First Bank and Trust, Ortho, Oklahoma, PC, The Perry Daily Journal, Stillwater Medical Center, Sudden Link, The Womack Insurance Agency, Steve Womack Farmers Insurance, Vance, Chevrolet.